Chapter 65 On the Way Home Vroom Jin Wu was busy licking his lips in unhappiness as he drove the van. Tsk. Was it because the gap between his stat values and the extraction targets were too great? What a disappointment it was, but his extraction attempts ended in failure. What a wast, but there's nothing I can do now. He'd still be able to kill a boss from a high-ranking Dungan in the future. What's important now was to quickly raise his skill levels high enough so that he'd not miss out on another chance. Leveling up. Now that was something Jin Wu excelled in, and also... Jin Wu's hand left the steering wheel for a little while, as a dagger with an elegant flowing arched blade appeared in his grip. Item. Baruka's dagger. Rarity. A type. Dagger. A dagger used by the great warrior, Baruka. Weight reduction magic has been applied to it, allowing the wielder's movements to become even more agile than before. Attack. Shatoward 10. Agility. Plushdra 10. Well, he didn't walk away completely empty-handed. This was the dagger the boss had been using. There were two, but one of them was broken, so he threw that away and took the remaining dagger. The Baruka's dagger, eh? Not only did it feature high attacking power, but it also raised his agility too. On that front alone, there was no need to compare it to Night Killer, a dagger ranked B he paid handsomely for, never mind the rank C Poison Fang of Kasaka. Its rarity alone was at A too. This was probably one of the best weapons to replace the Poison Fang of Kasaka that had been losing its effectiveness lately. I like the way it feels in my hand too. While he was mulling over the things that happened inside the Red Gate, they had arrived before Han Song Yi's home. Screech. She had been sitting in the passenger seat without saying a word, as if she wasn't even there in the first place. As soon as the van came to a stop, she climbed out of the seat and bowed her head. Drive safely. I will. Good night. Han Song Yi turned around to leave. Seeing her slumped shoulders and powerless gait, it seemed that the original goal of this trip had been met, one way or the other. Well, although things did get a lot complicated, I was trying to change her mind anyway. It was rather likely that she wouldn't try to become a hunter in the future. It'd be the same story for anybody if their first dungeon experience just so happened to be a red gate. He nodded his head in satisfaction and was about to start the van again. But then, the passenger side door was abruptly opened from the outside. Jin Wu shifted his gaze. Han Song Yi had returned to the van and was holding on to the door. What's the matter with her? His curiosity only lasted for a little while. Han Song Yi bowed her head deeply again this time looking much calmer than before. Thank you for everything, Oppa. He only now realized that, from some time ago, the honorific she used to address him changed from Achusi to Oppa. Uh, sure thing. Don't mention it. Um, excuse me. Hmm? Tomorrow? No, see you later? Later. Before he could ask her for clarification, Han Song Yi hurriedly ran away. After her back disappeared from his view did he realize what she was talking about. Uh-huh. From today onwards, he'd be teaming up with Yu Jin Ho again to mop up the rest of the raids. Han Song Yi was a raid team member, so of course they'd see each other again later on. Ah, uh, so she meant that, huh? What a relief that was, though. His plan would have been affected pretty badly if Han Song Yi refused to come out of her house because of the trauma from this incident. This worked out for the best. And now. He would use his shadow soldiers to clear out the rank C dungeons even faster than before. He felt utterly confident of clearing up the remaining raids in the shortest time possible. Also, he couldn't wait to see how Yujin Ho would react after witnessing his shadow soldiers in action too. The reactions of that man Yun Ki Jung were really priceless, weren't they? Jin Wu chuckled softly and leisurely turned the steering wheel. The next morning. Yawn? Jin Wu yawned grandly as he stepped out of the apartment's foyer. He only closed his eyes for a bit, but hell, it was time to meet up with Yu Jin Ho already. Hyung Nim, good morning. He heard the familiar energetic voice greeting him. Yu Jin Ho was already here, waiting. You don't even have a car, so how did you get here? The raid team's favorite ride, Mr. Van had been commandeered by Jin Wu last night. 
and was currently parked neatly in the apartment's parking lot nearby. I caught a taxi, Hyungnim. Ah, a taxi. And here he was, thinking of going to fetch the kid instead. Oh no, it's fine, Hyungnim. I'm the one asking for your help, so it's only right that I'm the one driving you around at least. Yoo Jin Ho grinned happily and replied. This morning started like any other. However, uh, Yoo Jin Ho discovered something new, and that was a cylindrical something held in Jin Woo's hand. Yoo Jin Ho's curiosity peaked in an instant. Hyung Nim, what is that? Ah, this? Jin Woo grinned mysteriously. I'm going to use it inside the dungeon today. Hyuk. Suddenly the chill invaded Yoo Jin Ho's back. Is it a weapon he's going to use inside the dungeon? Hyung Nim had already displayed many extraordinary things before. Just what kind of a horrifying weapon was he bringing to a dungeon today then? Yu Jin Ho was getting pretty psyched up already. Gulp. Yu Jin Ho swallowed his dry saliva and raised his head after finally settling his mind. Hyung Nim, let's get going. Hold on. Jin Woo pulled out his phone and dialed someone. There's someone we should take along as well. Excuse me? Who? Hey, Song Yai. It's me. Meet us at the parking lot. We'll go to the gate together. Song Yai. Could it be that Song Yi? As soon as Jin Wu ended the call, Yu Jin Ho asked him. Hyung Nim, the person you want to take with us, is she that high schooler in our team? Jin Wu nodded his head. Han Song Yi lived near here, and their destination was the same, so there wasn't any reason to go there separately, now was there? Unfortunately, Yu Jin Ho didn't see it that way. Han Song Yi, the rather cute high school girl with her hair tied up in a bun, he already knows her number and can talk to her in such a friendly manner too. Could Young Nim and her have formed a much deeper relationship than meets the eye? For sure, Young Nim was a cool guy even from another man's perspective. Especially when he uses nothing but a dagger to totally rip apart a monster. While Young Nim wouldn't be interested at all, it would not be a strange thing for an impressionable schoolgirl to fall for a man like that. Yujin Ho nodded his head. If this was the case, then there was something he had to make sure right away. Hyung Nim. Should I call Miss Han's sister-in-law from now on? Did this guy fall off the bed and hit his head or something? Jin Woo's crumpled expression was implicitly implying that. Even if Yujin Ho was not too quick on the uptake, he should still be able to figure that one out pretty easily. Um, you two aren't dating? She's a friend of my little sister. Oh, uh... So that's what happened. Yu Jin Ho finally understood the situation. He didn't even know what was going on, yet he was thinking of calling that girl his sister-in-law. His face reddened up considerably. Soon enough, Han Song Yi came to the parking lot. Not only that, she was noticeably better dressed than how she was usually. Seeing this, Yu Jin Ho grinned slightly. Yup, she's definitely a teen girl wanting to look nice in front of the brother of her friend and all. As the leader of the raid team, he was thinking of praising the fellow raid team member's choice of wardrobe. But then, Jin Wu greeted her first. Did you get some sleep? In that instant, Yu Jin Ho's expression froze stiff. Han Song Yi smiled and shook her head. I couldn't catch a wink. I'm sure you're still exhausted, so get some rest in the van. Listening to the two young people's conversation, the thought process of Yu Jin Ho became more and more messed up. Uh? Uh? Han Song Yi asked Jin Wu this time. What about you, Appa? Did you get some sleep? Well, only for a little bit. It was already 4 a.m. by the time I got back home anyway. Well, true that. Night? Couldn't catch a wink? Still exhausted? 4 a.m. by the time he got back home? Just as Yu Jin Ho's panicked state was morphing into a full-blown freakout, Jin Wu stopped walking towards the van and looked back at him. What are you doing, Yu Jin Ho? Um, well, uh, Hyung Nim? Well, the thing is, Miss Han Song Yi is still a minor, Hyung Nim. Okay, so? Never mind, Hyung Nim. Truly now, Hyung Nim was a man among men. Yu Jin Ho was deeply impressed by Jin Wu who didn't care about the glares of the public and thought that 
Indeed, he's extraordinary. He also began to reflect on his foolish ways of trying to apply the standards of the regular people on Hyung Nim. Around the same time, inside the private conference room of the White Tiger Guild, that's everything I saw. Park Hui Jin finished her report. Although Baik Yun Ho tried to dissuade her, saying that she should rest up first, she readily agreed to participate in the debriefing right away. She added that her stay over there was comfortable, comparatively speaking. The two men who sat through the debriefing, the guild master Baek Yun Ho and the section chief An Sang Min, were left utterly speechless. The agent in charge of yesterday's disastrous training, Hyun Kishol, was not present, currently in the Hunters Association, to discuss how to handle the fallout from this incident. So, there were only three people inside this conference room. An Sang Min was the first one to break the silence. Everything you told us, are they all true? You can speak to Go Myung Hwan and Yun Ki Jung. They will corroborate everything I've said. Those two hunters went home right away, saying they missed their families. Park Hui Jin was 100% certain that her testimony and theirs would not be any different. Well, I only described the things I saw after all. Such as, when that man wasn't around, she'd hear the pitiful screams of ice bears every now and then coming from the forest some distance away, or such as, when he'd suddenly wake up in the middle of the night to perform push-ups while everyone was fast asleep. She didn't bother to talk about things other hunters might have experienced, those that she didn't get to see. Huh? An Sahung Min spat out a gasp that could either be a sigh or a groan. Seong Jin Woo knocked out cold a rank, a hunter in one hit. He could use separate space magic freely, and most important of all, he controlled dozens of summoned creatures. Every one of those were unbelievable things to swallow. And even more shocking news than that was, he had cleared the upper rank dungeon almost all by himself. Baek Yun Ho broke his silence and said that sentence, word by word, syllable by syllable. He was qualified to say that, because he was an S rank. Now that is the most unbelievable thing out of all of them. Sure, the summoned creatures fought alongside him, but then again, those summons weren't his comrades to begin with. No, they were simply a part of Xiong Jin Wu Hunter's skill. In other words, it was pretty much the same thing as Xiong Jin Wu clearing the dungeon alone. Even if you're a really high ranked hunter, clearing an upper rank dungeon by yourself is incredibly difficult. Not only that, it was a red gate to boot. What if it was Baek Yun Ho? Perhaps. He might be able to solo a rank B red gate, albeit just barely. This feat was only achievable because Hunter Seong Jin Woo was capable of summoning and controlling dozens of summons. An Sang Min remained stupefied as he spoke up. There's no doubt that he's a re-awakened, possessing an extremely rare skill. Baek Yun Ho agreed. It is already rare to see a hunter controlling a summoned creature, but he can control several tens of them. While working as the S-rank hunter, Baek Yun Ho had met countless other capable hunters and had talked to a lot of them too, but he had never, ever heard of such a skill before. A reawakened possessing a rare skill that's on another dimension compared to every other rare skill. Baek Yun Ho expressed his admiration once more. It was here that An Sang Min thought of a question. If we were to evaluate Mr. Seong Jin Woo's ability in monetary terms, how much could it possibly be? Even Baek Yun Ho couldn't answer that. However, without a doubt, it didn't matter what Seong Jin Woo's current value was. As soon as he went through the reassignment test, his value would shoot up several times more. They needed to sign him up before that happened. The White Tiger Guild had already lost a rank A and several rank Bs through this incident. If they failed to secure the winning lottery ticket, called Seong Jin Woo at this time, then the losses incurred would be rather too severe to just write them off. I shall place my full trust in you, Chief An. Baek Yun Ho's eyes gleamed in the light of faith. An Sang Min formed a dignified expression. It was then. Hmm? The gazes of Baek Yun Ho and An Sang Min were directed to Park Hui Jin. She had her hand raised slightly. Baek Yun Ho asked her, Is there something you'd like to ask us? Succeeding in her mission to draw the attention of the two men, she lowered her hand and spoke. Please. Allow me to participate. In what? The recruiting of the raid team leader. 
No, I mean, Seong Jin Woo Hunter Nim. Baek Yun Ho and An Sahang Min exchanged glances for a bit before looking back at her. The person in charge of scouting and recruitment, An Sahang Min, tilted his head. But why would Park Hui Jin, Hunter Nim, I've spent the most amount of time with Seong Jin Woo Hunter Nim out of everyone in the White Tiger Guild, so surely my familiarity with him would prove to be useful in reeling him in. It had been six hours in reality, but inside the Red Gate, it was almost a week. Park Hui Jin's suggestion sounded logical from Baek Yun Ho's and An Sang Min's point of view. On top of this, Park Hui Jin was a beauty as well. One could say that the power of a beautiful face was absolute when seducing another person. Sensing that the thoughts of the guild master and the section chief had been swayed, Park Hui Jin finally got to the main topic. However, I have a condition, Baek Yun Ho asked her. And what could that be? When Xiong Jin Wu Hunter Nim signs up with our guild, please place me in his raid team. No questions asked. Chapter 66 Park Hui Jin had realized something back then, and that would be the level of terror an upper-ranked dungeon could possess, and how powerless she was in front of such overwhelming odds. It's like, I'm the one who ended up learning what Mr. Seong Jin Wu wanted to teach Han Song Yi. It was kind of embarrassing, but what could she do? Pretending that terrifying things weren't terrifying was an exercise in foolhardiness and stupidity. The experiences she had back in the Red Gate were enough to make her skin crawl. However, however, just because of her fear, she couldn't give up on all the sweet treatment and the status enjoyed by a rank bee hunter. The sky-high annual salary, the plentiful societal benefits, and finally, the public recognition. If one disregarded the inherent danger, then being a hunter was pretty much the perfect career. Precisely because of the high risk factor, the return on investment was equally huge. But now, Park Hui Jin had figured out a surefire way to decrease the risk associated with her job. And that is to go on a raid together with the team leader, Seong Jin Wu. The one person Park Hui Jin was utterly envious of back in the Red Gate dungeon was none other than Han Song Yi. There was only one reason for that, and that would be the promise Seong Jin Wu made towards Han Song Yi. I brought you here with me so I will take full responsibility and protect you. If you analyze those words in a different way, then he was trying to say that he had no reason whatsoever to protect other team members besides Han Song Yi. No, they were just baggage. So she was constantly worried that those two folks would abandon the group and sneak away unnoticed. But on the sixth day, Seong Jin Woo really did clear the upper rank dungeon all by himself and took Han Song Yi home, safe and sound. He had kept his promise. Seeing that, Park Hui Jin became sure of one thing, and that would be... As long as she was working for him during the raids, she'd never find herself in danger. The moment she realized this, her heart began pounding uncontrollably, and the level of her excitement hadn't cooled off even until now. His calm and cold decision-making, his excellent abilities, and not only that, his sense of responsibility too. She really wanted to go on a raid together with Seong Jin Wu. That was why she came up with that term of hers. They must put me in the team leader. Seong Jin Wu's raid team. No questions asked. Baek Yun Ho and An Sang Min chatted to each other. And a little bit later. We accept your terms. Baek Yun Ho smiled genially. In that case, Miss Park Hui Jin, act together with Chief An for the time being. Thank you very much, sir. However, she was well aware that scouting that man wouldn't be easy. Seong Jin Wu was more than well aware of his own true worth, after all. Even during the Red Gate, he was always so full of confidence. Indeed, making him move would be one hell of a challenge. Still, she now had another chance to meet him again. An imperceptible smile formed on Park Hui Jin's lips. Baek Yun Ho was pondering something until then, before opening his lips in some difficulty. Chief An. Yes, sir. I'd like to know Mr. Seong Jin Woo's contact details. Guild Master, that is. An Sung Min decided to tell everything regarding on why he had to conceal the matters regarding Jin Woo until now. Baek Yun Ho wordlessly listened to it and gravely nodded his head. It's understandable that he wishes to remain anonymous, 
what with him possessing such incredible abilities. After all, there are enough people in this world who wish to stay out of the limelight too. But then, such a guy did reveal his powers in front of quite a few eyewitnesses. Sure, the situation back then might have been urgent, but it was also likely that he felt more or less okay about letting the world know of his powers. As long as the matter isn't blown out of proportion, I'm sure Mr. Xiong Jin Wu won't blame you, Chief An. An Sung Min nodded his head. Of course, no one present in this room wished to leak this story beyond these walls. Never mind for Xiong Jin Wu, it would not be a good thing for both the association and the White Tiger as well. That's that, but... An Sang Min was worried about something else, though. And that would be his boss rushing things and ending up screwing everything up because he didn't know of Hunter Seong Jin Woo's rather decisive character. He dearly wanted to prevent that, at least. Sir, I think you directly contacting him is a bit... Baika Yun-ho quickly figured out what An Sung Min was trying to say here. Ah, uh, don't worry. I'm not trying to contact him in regards to the recruitment. Pardon me? But then, why... It's as Mr. Seong Jin Woo said last night. Baek Yun Ho realized something after listening to Park Hui Jin's debriefing. Seong Jin Woo was the White Tiger Guild's benefactor. He had saved three new recruits of the guild. Not only that, but he also took care of the Red Gate, thereby ensuring that the honor of the White Tiger wasn't tarnished. Even though the association's people made the blunder, just how bad would the impact on the guild's public image have been if this news got out? and everyone learned of them losing almost all of their new recruits. Just imagining it gave Baek Yun-ho nightmares, enough to have a total freakout, almost, right here. And there I was, trying to stop that person no matter what, just to get to the bottom of the incident. He could now understand the reason why the youth was feeling quite grumpy at that time. If he didn't know the circumstances, fine, but now that he knew, he simply had to do a certain thing as a living, breathing human being. As the representative of the White Tiger Guild, I'd like to officially express my gratitude to Mr. Seong Jin Wu, and to properly apologize for yesterday's incident as well. Ah, uh, if that's what he means, then... An Sang Min could understand now. With Beek Yun Ho's straightforward, no-nonsense personality, he wouldn't bother Seong Jin Wu with the matters of recruitment under the pretext of thanking the youth. And well, he also wanted to convey his gratitude as well. I understand. An Sang Min pulled his phone out and found Seong Jin Wu's numbers rather quickly. What is his number? Baek Yun Ho also pulled his own phone out to save the contact number. It was then. His number is. Just as An Sang Min was about to read the phone number, he felt something was off and turned his head to his side. Um, excuse me. What are you doing, Park Hui Jin Hunter Nim? Uh, well. I... With an awkward smile on her face, Park Hui Jin sneakily hid her phone away, its screen still displaying add new contacts. Inside the number one guild in Korea, the Hunters. A rather interesting piece of news found its way to the owner of the Hunters, and the currently active rank S Hunter, Choi Jong-in. This... Has this been confirmed? Would anyone knock on their boss's doors with unconfirmed information? Chief of the Recruitment Department, Joe Myung Ki, nodded his head. Yes, sir. We received this info earlier today from the association. Every major guild had one or two informants inside the association. It might not be a kosher thing to do, but this was the only way to stay one step ahead of the competition, contacting an exciting new talent first, if one were to emerge out of nowhere. However, earlier today, the hunter's informant had leaked a pretty strange story. And after lengthy deliberation, Joe Myung Ki decided to come to his boss's office with this news. Why? Because the White Tiger Guild is on a roll nowadays, and they are large enough to threaten us, the hunters. So, he figured that this information was worth reporting to the boss man. Exactly as Joe Myung Ki had suspected, Choi Jong In displayed great interest in the matter right away. From a red gate that killed one rank A and six rank Bs, Two rank C's returned alive? Not only that, they managed to clear the dungeon too. That is pure nonsense. Even if there was one rank B among them, there was no way that this was true. Choi Jong-in shook his head as he continued to read the memo. 
Without a doubt, there was someone else helping them out. Someone not mentioned in here. Choi Jong-in was certain of this. His extensive experiences in raiding dungeons told him as so, Zhou Myung-ki replied. Looks like the association also suspects that, sir. However, however, it seems that the White Tiger isn't saying anything. So, is the association planning to overlook it then? I heard that they don't want to conflate the matters any further. Since their fault in this incident is already too significant, sir. Hmm. Choi Jong-in rested his hand against his chin. It was a habit of his whenever he fell into deep thought. It was understandable from the association's point of view. But why was the White Tiger keeping quiet on this matter? There could be only one reason. The White Tiger must have received help from someone they don't want others to know about. I also thought the same thing, sir. The opinions of the two people present matched. Choi Jong-in's brain rapidly kicked into gear. A nameless helper who can rescue lower-ranked hunters from a dungeon that's difficult enough to kill most of the higher-ranked hunters. He could barely hold himself back from the curiosity now. A newbie who hasn't gone through the rank assignment test? Or maybe a convict whose identity can't be revealed? Either case was okay with him. If it was a newbie, then the hunters must bring that person to their fold. If it was a convict, on the other hand, then he'd be able to throw some mud in the white tiger's direction. Choi Jong-in's eyes began sparkling. Looks like we need to find out who was there. Have you thought of a good way, sir? If you want to catch a hidden raccoon, you have to set the raccoon's hole on fire first. Jo myung kis eyes grew extra round. Are you planning to set the White Tiger Guild on fire? You think I'm crazy? Why should I set someone else's perfectly fine organization on fire? Ah, my apologies, sir. Since you are such an excellent magic-type hunter and all, I, uh... His nickname wouldn't be the ultimate weapon for no reason, now would it? If Choi Jong-in got serious and used his powers in full, then blowing up a building would be as easy as pie. In any case, Choi Jong-in continued on. Not that. We just have to create a hot mess. So, it was fire. When Choi Jong-in began glaring at his underling, Jo Myung-ki hurriedly shut his mouth. We leak this to the media. That is... Jo Myung-ki's eyes widened. The big mistake of the Hunters Association, a massacre of the large guild's members, and finally, the ensuing mystery that got buried underfoot. The media just loves that kind of stuff, wouldn't you agree? Jo Myung-ki's head automatically went up and down in a nod. Choi Jong-in chuckled slyly. Once they get bombarded by the non-stop barrage from the media, the White Tiger will grow too fed up and in the end, reveal the identity of this mystery helper. So, there was a method like that? Jo Myung-ki also began smiling as well. This was a great chance to sucker punch the persistent White Tiger that dared to chase after the Hunter's Guild. The ends of Choi Jong-in's lips arched up. Call the reporters right away. You have entered a dungeon. As soon as he stepped foot inside the dungeon, Jin Wu took in a deep breath. Hmm. After being confined to an open field type dungeon for a few days, the air inside the cavern type dungeon felt new and refreshing. Yu Jin Ho followed him into the dungeon soon afterwards. Hyung Nim, I wonder just what kind of monsters would come out in this dungeon. Yeah, me too. I can sense their presence close by, though. Indeed, they were quite close, but they couldn't spot any. But when Jin Wu took one step forward, the floor of the cave began rising up here, there, and everywhere. Crumble, rumble. Humanoid monsters with skins made out of rocks appeared. Yu Jin Ho quickly recalled their name. Hyung Nim, it's the Stone Men. Jin Wu nodded his head. These beastards were known to possess the toughest exterior out of all the monsters that appeared within lower-ranked dungeons. Common sense was to use magic when one was to hunt down a stone man, but... Hold this for me, will ya? Jin Wu entrusted the cylindrical vinyl package to Yu Jin Ho and walked towards the monsters. Hyok! Yu Jin Ho flinched grandly, thinking that the content was a weapon, but nothing particularly noteworthy happened. It wasn't a weapon? Meanwhile, Jin Wu stood before the stone men and summoned both the Baruka's dagger and night killer. Slice. In the blink of an eye, the head of the stone man in front of the pack rolled to the ground. 
Jin Wu looked at the Baruka's dagger and smiled in satisfaction. It's pretty good. Then, suddenly, the smiling Jin Wu disappeared from the spot, tab. Just as Jin Wu reappeared past the group of the stonemen, all ten plus of them collapsed to the ground. Rumble. Crash. My body has gotten a step lighter and faster after the Red Gate thing, hasn't it? But of course it would have. His current level was 60. His level had risen up by 9 from 51 after killing all those ice bears and white phantoms. And now, the rank C monsters felt like those goblins from the rank E dungeon to him. At this rate, I don't even need to use my weapons. Now that he had warmed up nicely. Should I increase the hunting speed then? Time to summon his shadow soldiers. With an excellent timing, another group of stone men was slowly lumbering towards his position from the deeper part of the cave. Summon. As soon as he issued an order, the soldiers confined to Jin Wu's shadow rapidly revealed themselves behind him. And sure enough, there was a loud scream accompanying that too. Uwak! Oopsie. Jin Wu face palmed and turned around. I forgot he was here with me. He got way too excited and completely forgot about Yu Jin Ho for a moment there. Hyu Hyung Nim. While plopped on his A's, Yu Jin Ho pointed his trembling finger at the shadow soldiers standing right in front of him. What, what, what are these? It's a bit complicated to explain. Well, it's my skill. You, you can summon these things as your, your s skill. Jin Wu nodded his head. Yu Jin Ho's jaw remained slack and didn't want to close. Ah, uh, him and Hyung Nim had entered dungeons together eleven times already. He thought that he wouldn't get shocked anymore, but he was proven wrong once more. As expected, Hyung Nim was an existence that easily exceeded one's imagination. Gulp. Yu Jin Ho laboriously swallowed his saliva as his eyes took on the black armored soldiers emitting a blood chilling aura. Meanwhile, Jin Wu shifted his gaze away. The lumbering stonemen had already arrived near their vicinity. Jin Wu pointed at them with his chin. Go. As if they were waiting for that, the soldiers silently rushed forward. Rumble. The floor of the cave shook hard as the forty-odd armored soldiers all ran at the same time. For sure, with the addition of iron and the beast soldiers, the overall weight of the group had increased by a lot. It's like I'm looking at a fleet of tanks, isn't it? Jin Wu formed a very satisfied expression. What with the shadow soldiers sweeping through everything, the dungeon got cleared in the proverbial blink of an eye. The only things remaining on the floor were the scattered and broken bits of stone men that resembled cookies made out of dirt. A rank C dungeon was destroyed in no time at all, in other words. Ha! Jin Wu exclaimed in admiration. At this rate, we might get to mop up the rest of the raids pretty quickly, no? It seemed that the remaining eight raids would not take that long to finish up. As soon as the battle ended, the shadow soldiers retrieved the magic crystals and stood before Jin Wu in orderly columns. Igret and Iron stood in front of them. The two knights stepped to the front and knelt down. Once the soldiers stopped moving, Yu Jin Ho finally sneaked in closer to Jin Wu's side. Hyung Nim, here. He then returned the mystery vinyl package back to Jin Wu. Jin Wu wordlessly took out the tumbler contained with the vinyl pack and began sucking on the straw. Hyung Nim, what is that? It's veggie juice. Oh. I kinda like its taste, actually. Slurp, slurp. After he almost completely drained the tumbler, Jin Wu asked Yu Jin Ho. Hey, Jin Ho, how many gates did you book today? Yu Jin Ho was in the middle of cautiously reaching out to touch the fur of one of the beast soldiers, but he quickly pulled his hand back and turned back to Jin Wu. Four gates, Hyung Nim. With four today, only five would remain. He didn't see any reason to waste any more time on this. In that case, let's finish up everything by tomorrow. It doesn't matter if a gate is a bit far away, anyway. You mean tomorrow? Inexplicably, Yu Jin Ho took a look around him. Seeing all the broken wreckage of Stoneman littering the floor, he couldn't help but slowly note his heed. For sure, with this kind of speed. Understood, Hyung Nim. By the way, Yu Jin Ho hesitated slightly, before opening his mouth with some difficulty. Can I be the one to retrieve the magic stones? Why? I'm kinda upset because it feels like my role's been stolen by these guys, Hung Nim. 
Jin Woo burst out into a soft chuckle. Yup, this kid really is a weird one. And a day later, Jin Woo finished the 19 raids he had promised Yu Jin Ho. Chapter 67 Hyung Nim, now that the raids are over, how about we celebrate with a hearty meal? As they were driving back home, Yu Jin Ho cautiously asked, Celebrate? But there's no one with us, though. The raid team was disbanded as soon as the last raid was completed. Even Han Song Yi said that she had some a place she had to stop by, so there were only Jin Woo and Yu Jin Ho in the van. Yu Jin Ho spoke eh, as if he was embarrassed by something. I've been receiving your help all this time, Hyung Nim, so like, I just wanted to treat you to a good meal, at least. Why was he having so much trouble saying the words, let's have a meal together? Jin Woo chuckled wryly, since the kid was implying that he wanted to splurge on a grand feast. There was no reason for Jin Woo to refuse the invitation. Now, was there? All right. Yu Jin Ho's expression brightened considerably as soon as Jin Woo said, Okay, Hyung Nim, should I take you to this restaurant in a certain hotel that I know? They know how to make a mean steak, you see? No, not something like that. Unless such dishes came out in public engagements he simply had to attend, Jin Woo would rather prefer to eat a simpler meal in peace with Yu Jin Ho in an easygoing, relaxed atmosphere. What a good timing it was, since he spotted one such place that fit the criteria. The tip of Jin Woo's pointing finger pressed on the van's window. How about that place over there? Ah, uh, you wanted to enjoy Han Wu Young Nim? TL, Han Wu, Korean beef. Much more expensive than imported beef. No, the place next to that one. Yu Jin Ho's eyes narrowed to a slit, a restaurant next to that one. He could only see a common diner there. Day of flower blooming on pork belly. Thinly sliced pork belly specialists. By any chance, are you talking about that pork belly place, Hung Nim? What? You don't like pork? Yu Jin Ho grinned refreshingly. Not at all. I also love pork belly. Hung Nim. They parked the van in the nearby parking lot and went inside the diner, only to find the place was packed to the brim with patrons as well as part time workers busy moving around without a moment of rest. Right now, it was seven in the evening. No wonder the diner was so full. Welcome. How may I help you? One of the part-time workers walked over with a smile and engaged the two men. How many customers will we be serving this evening? Us two. Please follow me. After hearing Yu Jin Ho's answer, the part-time worker guided the two men to a spot in a secluded corner. However, hold on for a second. Yu Jin Ho took a look around and pointed towards the empty table by the windows. Can't we sit over there? I'm sorry, sir. That table has been booked already. A large group must have made a booking because several tables had been brought together. Currently, they were all empty. Yu Jin Ho stared at the empty tables with a rueful expression and shook his head. In the end, the two of them had to occupy the most secluded, out of the way spot in the diner. Yu Jin Ho lowered his head in shame. I'm sorry, Hyung Nim. There's nothing for you to apologize for. I was the one who suggested that we come here anyway. Even still, I should have taken you to a bit better spot than this one. Jin Wu smirked and lightly patted Yu Jin Ho on the shoulder. Don't sweat over such things and enjoy the food, okay? Actually, Jin Wu was inwardly worried about a scion of a Che bowl finding the taste of such cheap meat to his liking or not. Also, even though I didn't say anything, but, well, Jin Wu scanned his surroundings. He could see people, and then, more people. He spent quite a lot of his time in a silent apartment with no one in it, so he kind of enjoyed this hustle and bustle. Here are your orders of three portions of pork belly and two bottles of soju. TL, soju, Korean distilled spirit. Soon, the part-time worker brought out their orders. Sizzla, the thinly sliced portions of pork sizzled entisingly on the heating plate. And sure enough, pieces of meat began disappearing real fast. Fortunately enough, Yu Jin Ho seemed to like it. Well, the thing is, me and my friends frequent pork belly diners whenever we have the chance, Hyung Nim. Oh, really? 
Friends from the university? Yes, Hyungnim. It's just that I seem to mix better with friends from my university rather than the classmates from the expensive private schools I went to. Jin Woo smirked slightly and nodded his head. If it was Yu Jin Ho, then that sounded about right. Here, let me pour you a glass, Hyung Nim. Yeah, you too. Gulp, gulp, gulp. They filled their glasses with soju, clinked them a little, and one shotted them. Kiaha. Unlike Yu Jin Ho, who was immensely enjoying the bitter taste of soju, Jin Woo could only frown deeply in unhappiness. Hmm? Hyung Nim, is something wrong? No, it's nothing. Jin Woo could only stare at the empty glass with a bitter expression on his face. He had forgotten one crucial fact about his body, what with him being so busy lately and all. Tai Ring. Harmful substances have been detected. Effects of buff, detox will now commence. Three, two, one. Detoxification has been completed. I forgot that I can't get drunk anymore. Dumb and... It was the same story regardless of how many glasses he knocked back. Tai Ring, Tai Ring, Tai Ring. As long as the buff good health and long life was in effect, soju would remain as only slightly bitter tasting water and nothing more. Jin Wu angrily spat out a cuss in his mind. God dumn it! Rather than drinking bitter water like an idiot, he decided that it'd be infinitely better to order a soda instead. Excuse me. A part-time worker hurriedly came over to their table. I want to order two more portions of pork belly, as well as a bottle of Sprite, please. TL note at the end. Okay, please wait for a moment. After the waiter left, Yu Jin Ho began tilting his head. Hyung Nim, why didn't you order more alcohol? I'm not that good with alcohol, you see, Jin Wu replied, his expression not even changing slightly. But as usual, Yu Jin Ho didn't quite catch that. Instead, a loose smile crept up on his alcohol-tinged, reddened face. Hyung Nim still has a humane side, like this one. Yu Jin Ho kept on giving him a strange but meaningful look, but Jin Wu simply ignored him outright. It's not as if he started acting strange all of a sudden, just today or anything. Actually, he was getting curious about something else here. What are you planning to do from now on? When Jin Wu asked in a serious voice, Yu Jin Ho sat upright like a job seeker waiting for his job interview to start. As soon as I complete a simple written test at the Hunters Association, they should issue my Guildmaster license right away, Hyung Nim. I'm planning to negotiate with my father with that license in hand. Determination flooded in Yu Jin Ho's eyes. He had invested a lot of his own moolah for this purpose, and there was no room to retreat now. Besides, I also made a promise with Hyung Nim too. The guild building he promised to Jin Wu. That part of the bargain could be upheld only after Yu Jin Ho successfully persuades his father, Yu Myung Hwan, to install him as the new guild master. On the other hand, Jin Wu was feeling rather liberated. Sure, it'd be nice to get my hands on that 30 billion won building, but well, that would only be an added bonus to him. His real purpose had always been leveling up. While entering all those rank C gates, he had reached a far higher level than he initially bargained for. In other words, he had achieved his goal, and the results of his frantic leveling up spree, one punch from him, and the rank A hunter with a guaranteed annual salary of billions of one, Kim Cheol, lost his consciousness, just like that. At the bare minimum, I can make more money than that guy now. If one possessed excellent abilities, wealth was sure to follow. There was no need to feel nervous at all and his relaxed mindset could clearly be seen on his demeanor. Jin Wu began reminiscing about the last few days and smealed to himself. It was at this moment that Yu Jin Ho asked him a question. What are your own plans now, Hyung Nim? Oh, me? Did I ask something that I shouldn't? Yu Jin Ho thought like this and flinched slightly. But he breathed a sigh of relief after spotting Jin Wu's relaxed expression. I'll be out of reach for a while, actually. There's this place I have to go to, you see. That one sentence caused Yu Jin Ho's face to harden visibly. After forming an expression of an abandoned puppy, Yu Jin Ho emptied the soju glass in one go. Tap. He then placed the empty glass on the table, filling it up back to the brim. After knocking back another glass, he began to open his mouth with some difficulty. Hyung Nim, please tell me straight if I've been bothering you. If that's been the case, 
I shall make sure never to bother you again in the future. This idiot. The moment Jinwu said that he'd be out of reach, this idiot must have misunderstood his words again. Jinwu scratched the side of his head and asked a question instead of a proper reply. Hey, Jin Ho. Yes, Hyung Nim. What do you think of me as? Well, I. Yu Jin Ho's eyes rolled around this way and that as if he couldn't come up with a good enough answer before he raised his head. Hyung Nim, I have a brother who's over ten years older than me. Jin Wu remembered hearing that from somewhere. The firstborn son of Yum Yung Huan, Yu Jin Seong. My brother doesn't really like me, so I think the time I spent with him is far shorter than what I've spent with you, Hyung Nim. Compared to him, you have saved my life, helped me out with my dream, and... Yu Jin Ho stared straight at Jin Wu. To me, you're more like my real brother than him, Hyung Nim. He was still a bit scared of Jin Wu, though. Still, he'd never, ever forget these past few days following around Jin Wu for the rest of his life. Indeed, his respect was far greater than fear of Jin Wu at this point. If you see me as your brother, then... Jin Wu smiled deeply. I'll think of you as my younger brother as well. Hyu... Hyung Nim... The tip of Yu Jin Ho's nose reddened, and he began to get teary-eyed all of a sudden. If that was all, it'd have been fine. But then, he tried to get closer to Jin Wu out of nowhere. Hyung Nim, I want to give you a big hug. It's fine, right? Hey, hey! You're drunk, dude. Stop it! No, that's not true. Hyung Nim, I've never been this clear-minded in my life before. Hyung Nim! Say that with your eyes open, will ya? Wow! Either he was far too moved by his emotions, or he just was a bad drunk. Yu Jin Ho collapsed over the table and began crying his eyes out, prompting Jin Wu to pat him on the shoulder. Soon enough, Yu Jin Ho fell asleep, and the table had quietened down now. Ha ha. What a helpless kid. Jin Wu leaned back on his seat and lightly clicked his tongue. Yu Jin Ho. He was a troublesome kid in many ways, but for some reason, Jin Wu didn't find him dislikable at all. Next up on the bulletin. Jin Wu heard that voice and shifted his gaze over to its source. A TV mounted on the wall of the diner was showing a news bulletin. Is it nine in the evening already? He thought like that and stared the screen, only to spot someone rather familiar appearing there. Huh? Jin Wu's eyes widened. It was none other than Bak Yun Ho, and he was being bombarded with an unending stream of questions from the reporters as he exited from the White Tiger's headquarters. Is it true that there was a huge incident during the training of your new recruits? Is it also true that only the lower-ranked hunters returned alive while all the higher-ranked ones had perished? What do you think about the rumor of a mystery person allegedly aiding the survivors during this incident? Bayek Yun Ho was doing his best to ignore the reporters, but in the end, he had no choice but to respond. This incident has been investigated by the association already. It was true that there was an incident, but there was no mystery helper at the scene. No, the White Tiger Guild's proud hunters combined their powers and managed to clear the upper rank dungeon, and many hunters lost their lives or got injured during the process. That is all. Another reporter quickly fired in a follow-up question. If that's the case, why are you forbidding us from interviewing the survivors? Those folks managed to avoid death's doorstep by a hair's breadth. So, why do you wish to speak to those people regarding this deeply traumatic event? That's as far as I'm prepared to answer you people. Beck Yun Ho made a quick getaway from there after climbing into a car. Jin Wu's eyes remained wide open. They were talking about me, right? A little while ago, somewhere in the eastern United States of America, a shrill scream exploded out inside a certain dungeon. Ooak! A hunter named James plopped down on his butt. His legs had lost all strength, and he could only crawl on the floor to run away. But when he realized that he only managed to corner himself against a wall, despair quickly deed his expression. Oh dear God. The rank for this dungeon was estimated to be A, and in order to clear this gate, suitable hunters were recruited to form a raid team. However, every single one of them was annihilated. 
technically speaking, they weren't dead, but unconscious on the floor, though. I can't believe this. James leaned against the wall and breathed heavily before roughly shaking his head around several times. Today had been a series of truly unbelievable events. When the raid team entered the dungeon, they could not find a single monster. Because there was seemingly no monster inside. A dungeon without monsters? Can such a thing even exist? If that was the case, where did the magic power emission that the measuring equipment had picked up outside the gate come from? The hunters came up with all sorts of theories by themselves. This was already a hard-to-believe phenomenon, yet something even more shocking was waiting for them by the boss room. When they entered it, they did find a single monster. And it looked exactly like a human being. Indeed, there was only one, but... From that monster's single attack, every raid team member lost their consciousness. This creature proved to be far, far too powerful for them. Only James had somehow escaped from the boss room. Wait. Could it be that all the magic energy emission detected on the outside of the dungeon is coming from that thing alone? The measurement took place far away, from outside the gate itself, yet its magic power was already exceeding the level of a rank A. James shook his head again. That's just fecking impossible. But then... Ha! This, really now... That lone monster walked out from the darkness and stepped into the light. James began screaming once more after he saw the approaching creature. Ooh, wah, hack! Uh, whew, that hurts my ears, you know. The monster. No, an oriental man with long, unkempt hair and a bushy beard roughly scratched the top of his head. Ah, ah. James no longer screamed but began leaking out scared gasps instead. The mystery oriental man stood before James and placed his hands on his waist. What the hell? So, who told you to attack first without warning? I told you that I'm not a monster but a human being. I'm a human. Unfortunately, James could not understand a single word of this strange language. Naturally, his complexion progressively worsened. The oriental man stared at the terrified American hunter with a troubled expression on his face. Eventually, he spat out a long, long sigh. Dang it. What a pain, trying to talk to these big-nosed foreigners. In any case, he tried to initiate another conversation one more time. He squatted down low enough to match the American's eye level and did his best to sound as friendly and non-threatening as possible. Hey, hey, man. He could recall a few English words. With such a poor grasp in that language, he couldn't really tell if he was making any sense at all, grammar-wise. I am a Korean. So he tried to enunciate every word to the best of his ability. I want to go home. Chapter 68 An Event of an Unprecedented Scale A trapped person walked out of a dungeon, alive. The U.S. Hunter Bureau went into overdrive right away. The deputy director of the Bureau personally came down to the interview room after hearing this news. Beyond the one-way mirror, he could see an oriental man quietly sitting on a chair with a pair of handcuffs on his wrists. Is he that man? That's correct, sir. He looks like a regular civilian, doesn't he? Yes, sir. It was as he said. Once that man's unkempt hair and the messy beard were taken care of, his facial features would be that often a varag middle-aged oriental male commonly found everywhere. Have you found out his identity yet? He has repeatedly stated that he's a Korean hunter. South Korea? Yes, sir. How can a South Korean hunter come out of a dungeon on the other side of the world? He says that he was trapped inside the dungeon for the past ten years after the gat closed on him. And when he reopened it as he is, he's in America? Is that it? That's what he'd been saying until now, sir. The deputy director massaged his forehead. How was he to explain this to the director? He felt a migraine beginning its vicious assault on his head. If that's the case, then what are you guys waiting for? Why aren't you in there trying to get more information out of him? Never mind his director. The deputy was worried about having to report directly to someone even higher than that. Or worse, someone much, much higher up the food chain. In other words, there was no time to wait around sucking on thumbs like this. Too bad. The section chief in charge of information did not share his sentiment. Sir, 
we're currently focusing on the possibility of this man being a monster who possesses a human's memories instead. Okay, so. If it suddenly reveals its true intentions during the interview process, the entirety of Washington could be in danger. That made sense. A raid team consisting of several rank A hunters proved to be utterly helpless against that man after all. They could not afford to be careless here. Looks like we'll have to get a powerful hunter to continue on with the investigation then. Preferably, a rank S too. The section chief nodded his head in agreement. There is a rank S hunter who can converse in Korean residing nearby. The deputy director's expression brightened. He was none other than the deputy director of the Hunter Bureau. He had memorized back to front the list of all rank S hunters living in the States already. Mr. Huang, is he coming here? Yes, sir. One of the main hunters of the Scavenger Guild, Huang Dong Su. Just how much effort did the Hunter Bureau have to put in, in order to bring that man here and naturalize him as an American citizen? If it's him, even if something bad did happen, it would not be too much of a big problem. The deputy director smiled deeply. Oh, right. I almost forgot. A question belatedly formed in his head. If he were to make a report to the higher-ups, he at least needed to know the subject's name. What was the name of that man? It was a difficult-to-pronounce name, that's for sure. The section chief confirmed it on the report submitted to him by one of his underlings and spoke up. His name is Seong Ilhwan, a hunter from South Korea. Huang dong Su had no time for such things as mercy, especially if it was against monsters. He lost his parents to a dungeon break many years ago and grew up with only his older brother as the sole surviving family member. That was why when he awakened as a rank S, he knew this was his heaven-sent opportunity. The opportunity to rip apart and kill as many monsters as I can. Perhaps that was the reason why the glare of Huang dong Su as he entered the interview room was icier than usual. A man who came out from a dungeon, even the magic energy wavelength this man emitted, apparently had a similar pattern to that of a monster. If a monster is pretending to be a human, then he'd kill this abominable creature right here, right now. His glare met the man's gaze. They silently exchanged their gazes. Huang Dong Su put the file with this man's information down on the table, pulled the chair out to sit, and opened his mouth. It'll be better for you to cooperate with me. One word from me will determine how others will see you, a human or a monster. Got that? Understood. Before he got started, though, a deeply personal question floated up in Huang Dong Su's head. His older brother, who died inside the dungeon, was there any possibility that Huang Dong Su could return alive? He wanted to know about that first. Is there any chance of other hunters returning from a dungeon just as you have? The man shook his head. Huang Dong Su's brows quivered just then. How can you be so sure? Because I'm well aware of the reason why I came back. The reason? What is it? Let me ask you something before I answer that. I'll be the one asking questions here. Huang Dong Su's eyes narrowed to a slit. However, the man continued on with what he wanted to say regardless. The gates, monsters, and dungeon breaks. How much do you know about them? If this man had asked a stupid question, Huang Dong Su might have used force to shut this man up right away. But he couldn't do that right now, because that question was something that countless tried to answer ever since the first gate opened and awakened people began appearing ten years ago. This very moment could be when the answer finally revealed itself. Deputy Director, shush. The agents of the Hunter Bureau all nervously swallowed their saliva as they stared into the one-way mirror. Huang Dongsu asked, Are you saying that you know? Dungeons, gates, monsters. All these are merely preludes to a true war about to happen soon. And recently, a being that will become the greatest calamity ever seen has opened its eyes. So, the reason why you returned here is in order to stop that calamity. And what is, or who is, this greatest calamity ever seen? That I can't tell you. Huang Dong Su smirked derisively. A man who came here to stop a calamity can't talk about what it is. I don't know what that thing could be, but surely, rather than trying to stop it all by yourself, 
Wouldn't it be better to work together with others? The man shook his head. The number of people means nothing when facing this being. Doesn't matter whether lots of amateurs decide to work together or not. They will only become its prey and become its pawns instead. So, you are saying that only you can stop it? The man nodded his head. Huang Dongsu inwardly clicked his tongue. This guy's gone off the deep end. It wasn't that hard to understand, though, if this man had been truly trapped inside a dungeon for ten years. Or, alternatively, there had been some kind of an error, a mistake, during the process of the monster trying to copy a human's memories. And consequently, its brain had melted somewhat. In any case, Huang Dong Su decided to humor the other party for the time being, and see where this thing would go. You must be awfully confident of your skills, then. Let's just say that, besides my skills, I have other factors in my favor. Well, if you say so. Just what kind of information could he even extract from a madman? Huang Dongsu decided to stop the questioning here. Instead, he opened the man's case file, thinking of finishing up the Bureau's request, which was to investigate the man's background. Your name is Seong Ilhuan. The photo supplied certainly matched the man's face. Rather than ten years, though, it's like only a couple of weeks, maybe months, have passed by instead. However, Huang Dong Su decided not to mind it. He heard that high ranked hunters could even skirt past the aging process. Your records as a hunter look pretty good. You could have earned quite a lot of money these days. Seong Il Huan didn't respond to that. Back then, there was no proper system of hunters in place. Hell, there wasn't a ranking system for hunters even. Huang Dong Su began reading the file. Your spouse, Park Gyeong Hai, two children. The son's name is. As he read down the names of the children with no emotion on his face, Huang Dong Su's eyes opened up slightly wider for a moment. Seong Jin Wu? But it only lasted for a truly brief second. Huang Dong Su did his best to remain calm and continued on. Seong Jin Wu. And the name of your daughter is? Seong Jin Ah. Okay, next. It happened then. Wait. Before Huang Dong Su could flip to the next page, Seong Il Huan stopped him. Huang Dong Su raised his head, and he found Seong Il Huan's glare had become as cold as his own. Why did you emit a murderous intent when mentioning the name of my son? Oh. Huang Dong Su placed the file on the desk between them, and then killed the mic feed to the outside of this room. I told you that I'll be the one asking questions. I'll have to hear your answer first. What if I'm not interested in answering you? I'll use force, if necessary. Seong Il Huan's eyes began gleaming coldly. He didn't even show any hints of backing down, which prompted Huang Dong Su to smirk deeply. I got it, so you were a monster then. How dare a measly little monster threaten a hunter? An intense hostility directed to him. Now that was enough of an evidence to label this man as a monster. No, wait. This could be my second heaven-sent opportunity. Huang Dong Su decided as such, and switched the mic on again. Click. Beep. Deputy Director, this guy is a monster. Evacuate immediately because he might start attacking very soon. What? <sighs> Hold on! Beep. People panicking beyond the one-way mirror quickly ran out of the room. And soon, a loud wail of a siren resounded within the building. Meanwhile, a silver light began emanating from Huang Dong Su's hands. I'm planning to visit South Korea soon. After getting ready, Huang Dong Su threw an insidious smile at Seong Il Huan. So, what last words from his father should I deliver to your son? The TV was still talking about the Red Gate incident. Jin Wu scratched the back of his head. This thing is getting out of hand. Still, he didn't feel all that troubled. It was like... He felt a bit weird instead. He found it rather odd that some people who didn't even know anything, him were trying their darndest to find more about him, especially when he wasn't even there. But what if they find out about him? Didn't matter, really. Well, I've already leveled up to the point I was aiming for anyway. The reason why he decided to keep his abilities hidden in the beginning 
was that he had a lingering fear that he might end up being used by some unscrupulous beastards. But now the story was different. Even when the Guild Master of the White Tiger, as well as a rank S hunter, Baek Yun Ho had grabbed his arm, Jin Wu could yank his arm free without a problem. He wouldn't have even dreamed of achieving such a feat in the past. Surely I'd have wet myself just from meeting eyes with that man. An imperceptible smile formed on Jin Wu's lips. In times like this, he should have been enjoying the drunken bliss, with reminiscence serving as the perfect side dish. But then... Tai Ring. Harmful substances have been detected. Effects of buff. Detox will now commence. 3, 2, 1. Detoxification has been completed. What a regretful thing it was, his wish couldn't be granted. Jinwu smiled rather ruefully, but his facial expression became serious and determined, more than ever before as he put the soju glass down. I don't have any plans to stop here, though. Jinwu summoned his status window to ring. Name Seong Jinwu, Livel, 61, Class, Shadow Sovereign, Tittle, the one who overcame the adversity, Extra 1, HP, 13,000 Myorsun, MP, 1,677, Tiredness, 0, Stats, Strength, 142, Endurance, 101, Agility, 121, Intelligence, 89, Perception, 103, Available Stat, Points to Distribute, 0, Reduction in Physical Damage, 46%. His level was 61. Thanks to investing all of the points, he earned it via daily quests in intelligence. That stat was getting ever closer to the hundred mark. I've got a long road ahead of me, though. But he knew he could climb even higher. To an even higher place. To a place that possibly no one else could get to. That possibility made his heart palpitate. And the beginning of this climb would be at the demon's castle. The system definitely said that's the one item I wanted more than anything else. He recalled the time he got the Blessed Random Box, Blessed Random Box, presents the player with the item he wants, and he got the key to the instant dungeon, Demon's Castle, from it. The monster he ran into had a high level, and the rewards were top-notch, too. He had confirmed these two facts before exiting from there. He had no idea what might come out on the higher floors, but it not deviate too much. And so, it was now the time to go and reap his rewards. He was planning to enter there and spend a good few days inside. Jin Wu's only worry was, Once I'm inside, I won't be able to contact the outside. What should he tell his little sister then? Deciding to come up with a suitable excuse on his way back home, Jin Wu got up from his seat. Tap, tap. Hey Jin Ho, tap, tap. Eugene Ho. Slur up. Jin Wu shook and lightly tapped Yu Jin Ho, but the kid had completely blacked out. What should he do now? And he's supposed to go to the association tomorrow to take the written test too. Well, taking a test was one thing, but the most urgent thing to worry about right now was sending him home safely from here. Jin Wu pulled out Yu Jin Ho's phone. Obviously I can't call either the chairman Yu Myung Hwan or Yu Jin Xiong. Just who should he call here that would inflict the least amount of harm on Yu Jin Ho? Jin Wu pondered his choices before spotting a name on the contact list. Yu Su Hyun? Unlike with his father or his older brother, Yu Jin Ho had exchanged quite a few messages with this person. It had to be a woman, judging from the name. Jin Wu deliberated for a while on whether to call this woman or not before putting the phone down. Wait a minute. He quickly confirmed his store just in case. And sure enough, there was a certain item he was thinking of. He found it. Item. Status recovery potion. Rarity. E-type. Consumable. A liquid potion that can recover one's status. Once consumed, undesirable status ailments will be cured. Can be stored in your inventory, but it can't be handed over to someone else. As soon as he confirmed the purchase, a yellow potion vial suddenly materialized on the top of the diner's table. It was of a noticeably brighter color than the healing potion's deep red color or the blue of the MP recovery potion. Jin Wu took a look around him to make sure no one was looking before he quickly tipped Yu Jin Ho's head over and poured the status recovery potion down the kid's throat. It was then. Yu Jin Ho's eyes snapped open. Hyung Nim? Are you awake now? Yu Jin Ho's head was tipped backwards and Hyung-nim was staring down at him from above. Hyung-nim! 
What are you doing there? Jinwu couldn't come up with a good enough explanation right away. In times like these, pretending that nothing had happened was for the best. Let's go. Oh, yes, Hyung Nim. Yu Jin Ho stood right up from his seat before tilting his head slightly. Uh, why do I feel so refreshed? Yu Jin Ho moved his body this way and that before a refreshing smile formed on his face as he followed after Jin Wu. And as they left the diner, the news continued on. This is next item on the bulletin. The American government has continuously delayed releasing any official statement on the mysterious explosion that rocked the headquarters of the American Hunter Bureau. Chapter 69 On the first light of the day, Jin Wu headed to the Daisung Tower. It sure is really big. Trying to look up at the top of this 100-floor tall skyscraper from nearby made his neck hurt. But why are there so many people around here? Unlike the last time, there were way too many people coming in and out of the tower. The difference in foot traffic between the nighttime and daytime was far too huge. Not only the building's entrance but the streets surrounding it was packed full as well. It'll probably get real noisy if a person suddenly vanishes in a place with so many people in it, right? Not only that, the media was casting a spotlight on this mystery helper or whatever, so there wasn't any reason for him to go out of his way and draw attention to himself, was there? Obviously not. Jin Wu wasn't someone who enjoyed the attention, to begin with. He made his way to an area with not much foot traffic and pulled out the key to the demon's castle from his inventory. It was a long, slender, golden key. At a casual glance, it even resembled a fancy decorative item. No one's around me, right? After scanning his surroundings, Jin Wu nodded his head. Let's enter from here. Jin Wu activated his stealth skill, Shururuk. After vanishing from view, he returned to the main street and walked closer to the tower while brushing past the countless passers-by. Tap, tap. As befitting the busy street in the middle of the city, and during the daytime, no less. The distance he had to walk wasn't far, but he still ended up bumping into quite a few shoulders as he blended in with the crowd. However, not one person noticed it. If I were to abuse this stealth skill, I can do pretty much anything, no? He even thought that this had to be the reason why high-ranking hunters possessing the stealth skill were closely monitored at all times. His aimlessly wandering mind didn't stay like that for long. Just like the first time he came here, the surrounding view suddenly transformed as soon as he stepped across the invisible boundary. Rumble. I can already hear the sounds of flames burning from this far away. So just how hot is it in there? The giant tower enveloped in flames. The demon's castle, replacing the Daesung Tower, filled up his entire view. The thing was, though, humans were supposedly capable of quickly adapting to their situations. Well, it's not as bad as the first time. For sure he didn't feel as nervous as the first time he saw the demon's castle. No. Maybe. Maybe. It's because I have leveled up sufficiently enough. Jin Wu stored the key to the demon's castle in his inventory and summoned an ash-colored key instead. Item. Key to the castle's gate. Rarity. A type. Key. The key to unlock the gates of the demon's castle can be acquired only after killing the gatekeeper. It was the key he got after killing the gatekeeper, the Cerberus. Back then, he didn't even dare to use it after getting almost bitten to death by the Cerberus, but now he could use it. Shururuk. Next up, he summoned his weapon. On his left hand, the key, and on his right hand, the Baruka's dagger. Jin Wu cautiously approached the front gate of the tower. He couldn't see the Cerberus. Could it be that monsters don't respawn in the demon's castle? He couldn't be sure, but there was some possibility that it might be, just like with the Cerberus. In that case, in that case, the layout of this dungeon could be very different from other instant dungeons where monsters always respawned. Jin Wu expanded his perception to the limit. Thump, thump, thump. By expanding his perception stat that had broke past the 100 mark, he could even hear his own heart beating as loudly as thunderclaps. However, I'm not scared at all. Unlike before, he was certainly feeling a lot more confident knowing how strong he was currently. Maintaining his vigilance and shivering from fear were two very different stories after all. Teti Ring. When he stood before the castle's gate, 
a new message popped up. Will you use the key to the castle's gate to enter, Yn? One. You think I'm going back home after coming this far? Jin Wu snorted at this nonsensical question and chose yes. Kriak. He didn't even do anything. Yet the huge pair of doors began moving as the hinges issued loud creaks. Slam! Huh! Jin Wu was flustered next. He had had his perception expanded to the max, yet he couldn't sense a single presence of monsters from beyond the castle gates. There are no monsters? Jin Wu had been worried about precisely the opposite situation happening to him. He had even thought about going through a special training by deliberately entering the penalty zone to fight against those desert centipedes or whatever, in case monsters crazily rushed out as soon as the castle gate opened up. But what the hell? What the hell was the meaning of this? All his efforts so far seemed to be in vain. The interior was utterly devoid of any life. Huh. Well, this is... Feeling somewhat dumbfounded, Jin Wu stored Baruka's dagger back to his inventory and entered the demon's castle. It happened then. TTI ring. As soon as a mechanical beep rang inside his head, he immediately summoned both of his daggers. But... That beep was nothing more than an alert to let him know that a new message had arrived. Uh? A new quest is available. A new quest, is it? It wasn't a daily quest? Well, it'd be strange if it was, since Jin Wu made sure to complete the daily quest and pocketed the rewards before coming here. Meaning, this had to be a regular quest, and that would be his first ever. Well, yeah. I've been getting only the hidden quests or emergency quests until now, so... Excluding the daily quests that showed up every day regardless of how he felt, of course. Jin Wu tilted his head slightly and confirmed the contents of the message. Confirm. Then, the information on the quest appeared before him. T ring. Normal quest. Collect the souls of demons. 1. Demons are everywhere within the demon's castle. Kill the demons and collect their souls to receive special rewards. One soul can be collected from a single demon, but on higher floors, there are demons with multiple souls. Quest Generation Condition Entry into the Demon's Castle Quest Clear Condition Collect 10,000 souls Rewards 1. Any one item available in the store 2. Plus 20 bonus, stat points 3. An unknown reward 20 bonus stat points. That was the very first thing that attracted Jin Wu's attention. The stat points. I can raise my intelligence by 20 points. A smile instinctively formed on his face. He'd been feeling his lack of MP for quite some time now. I need lots of mana if the shadow soldiers need to regenerate. And was mana his only problem? He had already confirmed that the number of shadows he could extract, as well as the number of soldiers he could store, increased when his intelligence stat also improved. So, for him, increasing the intelligence stat was a must. There always has been a limit to increasing that stat through level-ups and daily quests, but now... If he could get his hands on that 20 points via the completion of this quest, then his problems would be solved in one fell swoop. Gulp. He was salivating already. Not only that, Jin Wu's gaze landed on other rewards. Rewards 1. Any one item available in the store. 2. Plus 20. Bonus stat points. He was feeling grateful for the bonus stat points, but now, he could even choose one item from the store too. Can I really choose anything? Jin Wu recalled those ultra-expensive items he saw in the store's menu. I definitely saw... There were some S-rarity items that cost billions. Hell, even tens of billions there. Well, those billions weren't the real-world currency, but gold that only existed within the system, though. Still, just how amazing was this? The Night Killer he'd been using so nicely until now cost only three million gold. A three million B rarity item already possesses this high quality and attack power, so just what will those costing billions be like? His curiosity had been stoked for sure. Never mind the mystery third reward. Just from looking at those two rewards alone, he knew right away that he couldn't let this quest slip through his fingers. For this kind of rewards, killing one or two monsters is a walk in the park. 
Jinwu was genuinely elated now and thought about finishing this quest real fast to receive those rewards, only for his eyes to bulge out after confirming the quest clear condition. Ten thousand? He gasped out in sheer shock. This was already far beyond the notion of killing one or two monsters. What the hell? What kind of slave labor is this? He had no idea what kind of a monster these demons could be, but hell, ten thousand was a scary high number indeed. Still, a smile crept up on Jin Wu's face. Well, that would have been if I was alone. Currently, the number of shadow soldiers he possessed was fifty. If each one killed two hundred, this quest would be cleared. If he pushed his soldiers to work hard, surely this sort of quest would prove to be nothing but a cakewalk. Will you accept the normal quest? Collect the souls of demons, one? Of course. He had no reason to refuse. You have accepted the quest. The penalty for failing this quest would be him wasting a bit of time, that'd be all. Compared to other quests, uh, you... Without a doubt, this was truly a wonderful quest when compared to the class change quest or emergency quests where his life was on the line. Jinwoo raised his head. I wonder, is that thing supposed to display my progress from now on? As soon as he accepted the quest, a counter he hadn't seen before appeared in the air, just above his line of sight. Collected souls of demons, zero ten thousand. Ten thousand, so far away. A bitter chuckle leaked out of his mouth once he got to physically confirm the number that had been floating inside his head as nothing but a vague notion until now. It was then that he discovered a different counter to the left of that one. Huh? XP2 is needed for the next level up. 60,000. There it was. 60,000 clearly displayed via the holographic display. As soon as he met that he'd level up, or at least that's what was written there. Even my experience points are being displayed now? However, he had never seen anything like that prior to his entry into the demon's castle. Maybe. To make sure, Jin Wu took a step backwards and left the demon's castle. Sure enough, both the counter for souls and experience points disappeared. When he stepped back inside, they showed up again as if they had never disappeared in the first place. Yeah, they only show up inside the demon's castle. Although it was unfortunate that he couldn't see them outside the castle, but at the least, it'd be quite convenient to have them inside, that's for sure, if he looked at it from another perspective. Does this mean that it'll take a long, long time for me to conquer this place? That was a distinct possibility. Jinwoo carefully read through the quest details one more time and closed the message windows. That should be enough preparation, I think. Finally, he had some leeway to take a closer look at the interior of the demon's castle. Hyuk! Jin Wu's eyes widened immediately once he did. Woo! Inside of the castle was... a ruined city. Quite unexpectedly, it was a field-type dungeon. What is this place? Is this Seoul? If everyone in Seoul died and a hundred years had passed by, would the city look like this? Within this lifeless, ash-gray cityscape, only the lonesome street lights flickered, as if they were having a seizure. I never expected it to be a field-type dungeon, though. Not only that, a dungeon created to look like the metropolis of Seoul. This was the kind of scale that utterly disallowed any comparison to other instant dungeons that were based around a special location, such as subway stations or department stores. Jin Wu's eyes narrowed to a slit. So, like... Where should I go now? Where should be his destination? Jin Wu's gaze scanned the surroundings and the distant horizon. Thankfully, his dilemma didn't last for long. In the far off distance, in the direction where the famed Namsan Tower should have been, there stood a massive pillar of light stretching beyond the sky. Let's head over there. Jin Wu began walking in that direction. He also made sure to memorize the surrounding area of the castle's gates in case he got lost on the way too. However, his steps had to come to a stop not long after. Kick 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 kick. Monsters with smallish physical sizes began creeping out from the gaps of ruined buildings, one by one. Low-ranked demon. Jin Wu immediately recognized what they were from the dark red name floating above their heads. They look like. 
These creatures reminded him of gargoyles, but without wings. There were a total of eight of them. Seeing them, the corners of Jin Wu's lips arched up. Well, for starters, I got myself eight souls. Right away, Quajik. The Baruka's dagger pierced deeply into the forehead of one of the demons. You killed a low-ranked demon. You have earned 100 experience points. You have collected one soul of demons. Kiak? Kiik? The moment the demon's attention had shifted to the one with the dagger stuck to its forehead, Jin Wu rapidly approached another one to separate its head from its body. Slice. You killed a low-ranked demon. You have earned 100 experience points. You have collected one soul of demons. This one also gave him 100 EXP. And I need 60,000 experience points. If he hunted down 600 low-ranked demons, then he'd get to raise his level. The remaining demons were taken care of in the blink of an eye. Kai. Kek! He had collected eight souls, and the experience points earned were 800. Hey, this is not too bad. And they said that the journey of a thousand miles started with the first step. Jin Wu's eyes began sparkling brightly as he began searching for his next prey. Inside the office of the White Tiger Guild's guild master, Baek Yunho was browsing through several documents he had been neglecting in the past few days because of his busy schedule. Beep! He picked the phone up after hearing that beep. Master, Min Byung-gu Hunter, Nim wishes to speak to you. What should I do, sir? Let him through. Yes, sir. A short while later, a familiar voice came from the phone speaker. Baek Hyung, why did you switch your mobile off? Baek Yunho spat out a long sigh. Because of the deem reporters. I was thinking of being out of the public's eye until this whole thing dies down. Ah, that. The Red Gate incident. Yeah, I saw the news here in Japan, too. Hyung, I had no idea that you were that photogenic, you know? Stop riling me up, man. I'm not in the mood to kid around. If I find out just who leaked it to the media, I'm gonna... Hyung, don't sweat over it too much. The whole thing's gonna get buried soon anyway. You see, there is going to be bigger news, soon. Big news, is it? From Japan? Yes. This is going to be a bigger issue than you can imagine. You'll most likely hear about it soon in Korea, too. What happened? About a week ago, the Japanese Hunters Association secretly contacted several of Korea's large guilds. They said that they needed advice from the Korean hunters. And so, two days after that, a few of Korea's elite hunters traveled to Japan. The hunter Min Byung-gu was one of them. Baek Yun-ho had been curious about that matter for a while now. Stop building up the suspense and tell me what happened already. This was the first time the Japs have asked for advice from us. What made them do that? What did those prideful beastards want? Baek Hyung. I'm sure you still remember the ants of Jeju Island, yes? Four years ago, a rank S gate opened up on the island of Jeju. Ants came out of there. There had been three separate subjugation operations since then, and all of them ended in failure. In the end, the Korean government gave up on the island, and it was now a barren land ruled by monsters. How could I forget? I nearly died back then. Well, looks like there's been some kind of a mutation. A mutation, is it? But what does it matter to us? Aren't they just going to fight among themselves while being confined to that island? Well, the thing is, the voice coming from the phone sounded rather troubled. The Japs found a corpse of a winged ant on the coast of Japan, actually. Chapter 70. You killed a low-ranked demon. You have earned 100 experience points. You have collected one soul of demons. You have earned 100 experience points. You have collected one soul of demons. For the next two hours, he madly hunted down every low-ranked demon he could find. Afterwards, Jin Wu confirmed the number of souls he managed to collect. Collected souls of demons, $309,000. He had now completed about 3% of the quest. If he could continue hunting at this speed, then according to his calculations, he could level up in another two hours. His current level was 61. In the past, he needed experience points from nine rank C dungeons in order to level up from 60 to 61. And the time spent 
was around two days, too. But here, he could already think about leveling up only after four hours. This is crazy. A thick smile formed on Jin Wu's lips. Just how long had it been since he could hunt this enthusiastically? Is this the first time since then? He couldn't really remember ever being in a similar situation since he went to the Hapjong subway station and repeatedly cleared the first two underground floors until his level didn't want to rise anymore. Kick! Whenever Jin Wu's dagger flashed, one low-ranked demon fell without exception. Kiak! 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 Kick! Sometimes even several of them too. In the blink of an eye, Jin Wu killed twenty more low-ranked demons. This is a gold mine. Both his experience points and the number of souls continued to rise as he continued to hunt down the demons. Not only that, there was the added bonus of loot drops too. A bright smile formed on Jin Wu's face as he collected the loot. Their horns come out almost all the time, don't they? Item. Low-ranked demon's horns. Rarity. None type. Miscellaneous. Two horns attached to the head of a low-ranked demon. Demon's horns are used as base ingredients for high-grade magic spells and therefore can be sold at a high price. The Japtem Demon's Horns, selling it in the store would net him 200,000 gold. Each of those fangs of Cerberus or whatever got me 150 grand each but this. Well, monsters of the Demon's Castle are really generous, aren't they? After experiencing the usefulness of the store multiple times recently, these Japtums no longer remained Japtums in Jin Wu's eyes. All the gold earned through here would eventually become his flesh and blood later. I can't throw anything away. Feeling really chuffed, Jin Wu sold off what could be sold and stored what should be stored as he rummaged through the remains of the demons. In the midst of this, what's this? He found an item he hadn't seen before, and the thing with its end poking out from the busted gut of a demon was... Item... Entry Permit. Rarity. Type. A permit allowing you to enter the second floor of the Demon's Castle can only be used on the first floor floor transfer magic circle. TL. I'll use the North American way of counting floors from here onwards. It was a document scroll, tightly rolled up. An entry permit? When he unfurled it and took a look, he found all sorts of undecipherable drawings and letters adorning its surface. In the end, the only thing that helped him understand its purpose was the item explanation. An item that lets me go up from the first floor to the second, is it? Could it be? Jinwu took a look around. This place was inside the demon's castle, but at the same time, he was also inside the Daisung Tower. If the demon's castle was also divided into floors like the tower, then he'd be on the first floor. Since this place looked like a field-type dungeon, I didn't expect there to be different floors. Could it be that, just like the Daesung Tower, there were 100 floors here, too? Jinwoo was left agape by the sheer scale of this particular dungeon. It can't really be 100 floors, can it? There was only one way to confirm this, and that would be to locate that transfer magic circle and see for himself. Now, where would this floor transfer magic circle thing be in this place? Jin Wu's wandering gaze stopped at the pillar of light piercing the sky. Well, that has to be it. Getting there was his initial goal, but his attention got robbed by the hunting of the low ranked demons, and before he knew it, he had moved further away from his destination than before. Should I head there now? He thought that this might be a good time to think about heading there. Also, he had hunted down all of the low-ranked demons nearby, too. Jinwu grinned brightly. Summon. The shadow soldiers stored inside his shadows via the shadow storage skill didn't require any chanting, or whatever, to summon them. Unlike when he was trying to extract shadows, Shururuk. In front of Jinwu, the giant beast soldier extracted from the leader of the ice bear pack appeared silently. Growl and it was a giant monster-ish bear standing on its hind legs. It was as large as a house, but to Jin Wu, it was not much different from a mild-mannered, lovable puppy. Get down! Growl! When the shadow beast soldier laid down on the ground, Jin Wu lightly jumped on top of its back. Giddy up! 
As soon as Jin Wu lightly tapped the side of the beast with his leg, the shadow creature rushed towards the pillar of light with a frightening turn of speed. Thud, 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 thud. The massive creature also possessed incredible agility as well, and before long, the distance between him and the destination rapidly closed up. Of course, they still encountered obstructions every now and then. Kiarik! Kik! Kik! Roar! One thunderous swipe from the beast soldier, and the situation normalized right away. Ho oh, oh. Jin Wu formed a deeply impressed expression. I only decided to ride it for fun, but isn't this actually pretty cool? Thinking that he should utilize this means of transportation often from now on, he even named his new ride right there and then. From now on, your name shall be Tank. Roar! The beast soldier, no, Tank, roared out while raising its head high up. Was it trying to say it liked it or hated it? What with its incredibly powerful vocal cord, Jin Wu couldn't really tell which was which. In the meantime, the light pillar got closer and closer. Tank gradually slowed down and eventually stopped before the light pillar. Nice work. Jin Wu got down to the ground and patted Tank once, before storing the big guy back into his shadow. Then he turned around to face the magic circle. The familiar mechanical beep rang inside his head as soon as he did. Tiring. You have discovered floor transfer magic circle. There was a magic circle carved on the ground. The light shooting out from it was reaching into the sky. Without hesitation, Jin Wu stepped inside. Nothing happened. Jin Wu tilted his head this way and that, before taking a few more steps to stand in the middle of the circle. Only then another message popped up in his view. No floors have been opened. Which floor would you like to transfer to? How many floors are there? Of course, there was no reply. Is there no other way to find out how many floors are there, except for finding out for myself? Jin Wu pondered for a moment. There wasn't that much left for the experience points. So, should he stay and raise his level before going up, or should he just go up and level up there? Unlike other instant dungeons, there is no monster respawn in this place, so staying on one floor will be inefficient in the long run. Besides, the system said that demons with more souls existed on upper floors as well. He concluded that, for both his experience points and to clear the quest, it could be more advantageous to get to higher floors as quickly as possible. Fine. Let's go up then. Jin Wu spoke up. Second floor. You need the entry permit. Jin Wu summoned the scroll as per the instruction. As soon as it appeared, it dissolved into the light. The second floor of the demon's castle has been unlocked. You are transferring to the second floor. Buzz. An even stronger ray of light began rising up from the magic circle. At the same time, Jin Wu realized something. Uh, so that's how it works. As it turned out, this whole thing was just an elevator. The moment he realized what this pillar of light actually was, Jin Wu was immediately transferred to the second floor, along with the blinding explosion of light. Second floor, third, fourth, and eventually the 27th floor. That was the result of grinding for two days straight. He told Jin Ah, his little sister, that he'd be on a week-long trip. I have five more days. Considering his gradually increasing clearing speed, he began to think that it might be doable to get to what he assumed to be the last floor, the 100th floor, within the next five days. Maybe even sooner than that. Jin Wu took a look at his surroundings. It was still a ruined city. I can't tell which city this floor is based on anymore. Every floor was modeled off on a different city. However, the higher he climbed, the state of destruction the city was in got worse and worse. And on this 27th floor, he found it hard to tell whether this place used to be a city or not. Would a city look like this after having experienced a concentrated carpet bombing? Jin Wu quickly threw away useless thoughts and shook his head. I shouldn't be wasting time like this. He checked the time with his wristwatch, and it was already 11 in the evening. There was no daytime or night inside this dungeon, so he needed to rely on his watch to keep time. Eleven would be a good time to get some shut-eye if he wanted to continue clearing this dungeon tomorrow with a refreshed body and mind. But before that, should I check the result of my hard work first? 
Jin Wu shifted his gaze over to the quest progress window. Collected souls of demons, 2, 1, 16, 10,000. Over 20's 100, is it? Meaning, he had hunted down over a thousand demons in a day. He had killed quite a lot during the last two days, that's for sure. It was still a long way off from the goal of 10,000 souls, but he was betting on the demons of the upper floors that allegedly possessed multiple souls. Right. Getting to higher floors should remain as my priority. Next up, his level. Heok. Jin Wu's eyes opened wider. Level 67. His level had climbed to 67 even before he had noticed it. He'd been hunting low ranked demons worth 100 EXP for a while, but then his leveling up speed exploded upwards after he began hunting mid ranked demons that gave out 300 EXP each. My level is climbing up real nicely too. Lots of monsters, rich experience points, and the perfect level of difficulty. The demon's castle was the best level up zone one could ever hope for. His level wasn't the only thing experiencing a rise either. Jin Wu's proficiency with his various skills was also rising up as well. Currently, the night killer was floating above Jin Wu's palm. He was using the skill Ruler's Reach, the power that allowed him to physically manipulate objects without actually touching them. Even when he was doing nothing, like right now, he devoted himself to increasing his proficiency with the skill. Well, this ruler's reach skill doesn't require any mana to begin with. It was a bit tiring mentally because he had to constantly focus on the skill, but compared to the potential uses this skill had, a small little headache was a cheap price to pay. With a nice timing, a good piece of news arrived before his eyes. The level of the skill, ruler's reach, has increased. Nice! Jin Wu grinned brightly and leaned against a wall. He felt safer and more content as he became stronger bit by bit. His eyelids slowly closed. Now that I think about it, the Guild Master License must have been issued by now. Was Yu Jin Ho doing well? Perhaps because it had been a while since he acted alone, he couldn't help but recall the mug of Yu Jin Ho who used to follow him around. The successful firstborn who had become an excellent entrepreneur and the second born with the qualification to become a master, but who was still a university student. The fight between them would not be easy. Do your best, Yu Jin Ho. After cheering Yu Jin Ho on in his mind, Jin Wu slowly drifted off to a deep slumber. Yu Jin Ho entered a luxurious traditional Korean restaurant with a determined face. He chose this place after taking into account his father's taste. Has the chairman arrived yet? Yes, he's waiting for you. Yu Jin Ho swallowed his saliva after hearing the maitre d'hôtel. Please, this way. He was guided to the private room where his father, Yu Myung Han, was waiting for him. The traditional sliding paper door was opened and immediately, Yu Jin Ho's nervousness increased by several folds after seeing his father's face. He wondered if he was getting weak kneed again, but Yu Jin Ho hardened his resolve and settled down on the opposite side of his father. What's the occasion? You even called me first for this meeting. Father, before I begin, I'd like you to take a look at this first. And this is... This is my Guild Master license, as well as the records of the raids I've been in so far. Your master... License? Yours? When Yu Myung Han formed a disbelieving face, Yu Jin Ho nodded his head with a smile. Yes, father. Yu Myung Han wordlessly took a look at the documents his son had handed over. And then, a certain light began gleaming in his eyes. While his father maintained a weighty silence, Yu Jin Ho's heart was beating so madly that he found it hard to even breathe properly. And so, Yu Myung Han carefully placed the documents on the table and continued on. You wish to run the Yu Jin Guild, is that right? That's correct. Hmm. It was at this point that a hint of a dilemma alongside the emotion of shock appeared on Yu Myung Han's face. To think that father is pondering between me and my older brother, Yu Jin Ho was genuinely moved inside. The fact that his father was thinking about this matter was a big win for Yu Jin Ho. If it was in the past, he'd be satisfied with this much. However, he had no desire whatsoever to back off now. As you know already, father. Giving the position of the guild master to an outsider carries too much risk. Enough. Yum Yong Han raised his hand. 
At the same time, Yu Jin Ho's mouth stopped moving. Father's enough was one of the most absolute commands that no one in the Yu household could go against. There is someone I want you to meet. Pardon me? Yu Jin Ho's eyes went round at that. He was the one who called and asked for this meeting, yet his father wanted to introduce him to someone? Who could it be? Just as Yu Jin Ho's curiosity peaked, the door opposite to the one he used to enter the room slid open. Ah, uh, hello there. Was he in the late twenties? or early thirties? A man around that age group awkwardly greeted Yu Jin Ho as he entered the room. Who was this man? Yu Jin Ho couldn't recognize this man at all. When Yu Myung Han signaled with his chin, this unknown man settled down next to him. This here is Hunter Go Myung Hwan. Go Myung Hwan. Yu Jin Ho tilted his head. He had never heard of this name before. Father nodded his head as if he had expected this already, and continued on. He is one of the survivors from the White Tiger Guild's Red Gate incident. The one that's been making so much noise lately. Chapter 71 Yu Jin Ho was taken by surprise. The Red Gate? Why was the story of the Red Gate brought up here, out of the blue? Since the incident had been talked about non-stop in mass media, even Yu Jin Ho knew what had happened. But this timing was suspiciously coincidental, and so, he found it difficult to figure out where his father was going with this. And this man here, a man who was supposed to be a survivor of that incident, why did the survivor that the media was madly scrambling over to find appear here? Yu Jin Ho's curiosity continued to balloon greatly. After staring at his son for a little while, Yu Myung Han slowly opened his mouth. Looks like you haven't heard of it yet. Pardon me? Yu Myung Han disregarded the still confused Yu Jin Ho for the time being and shifted his gaze over to Go Myung Hwan, sitting there in nervousness. Mr. Hunter. Yes, Chairman. Please inform my son who was there besides the White Tiger Guild's new recruits on that day. Understood. Go Myung Hwan's stare now was directed to Yu Jin Ho. Unintentionally, Yu Jin Ho met Go Myung Hwan's gaze and a question mark floated up on his face. Go Myung Hwan opened his mouth. There was a young female hunter who looked to be a high schooler and... A young female hunter? Even then, Yu Jin Ho couldn't imagine just whose name would pop out from Go Myung Hwan's lips. And... Mr. Seung Jin Wu. Tumble. Yu Jin Ho thought that he could hear his own heart fall to the pit of his stomach. Shh. Yung Nim was there at the Red Gate incident. What was going on here? He was already feeling quite confused, but now, his thought process devolved into an even more complicated mess. In the middle of his confusion, he suddenly remembered something. Wait, now that I think about it, a few days ago. Hyung Nim was conversing with such familiarity with Han Song Yi, someone whom he didn't even share a casual greeting before that day. Do you still remember the name of that female hunter by any chance? It was Miss Han Song Yi. How can this be? Yu Jin Ho's jaw dropped to the floor. To think, there was such a secret to the mysterious relationship between those two people. Wait, if that's the case then... Then, the identity of the potential helper the news outlets were talking about was... As if he knew what Yu Jin Ho was about to ask, Go Myung Hwan quickly confirmed the truth. We, the members of the White Tiger Guild and Miss Han Song Yi, could escape from the Red Gate all safe and sound, thanks to Mr. Seong Jin Woo. Ha, 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 ha. Hyung Nim, just what did you do in there? Yu Jin Ho formed an expression comprised of half surprise and half joy. He even forgot that he was in front of his father and asked out loud, What happened inside the Red Gate? Go Mi Young Hwan glanced to his side, to the head of the dining table. Yu Mi Young Han nodded his head. Go Myung Hwan carried a face of a man dying to open his mouth until then, and as soon as the permission was given, he began to tell his story with great relish. So, what happened was... Yu Jin Ho's eyes twinkled as he listened. At first, everyone was taken back somewhat, after learning that a pair of rank E hunters were coming to observe the new recruit training process. But then... Go Myung Hwan began describing what happened that day with a hyped-up voice reminiscent of a little kid proudly showing off to a friend the brand new toy he got as a gift. 
however. He did what to a rank A hunter? Go Myung Hwan wasn't the only overexcited person in the room. Exactly! With his palm he went like pa! He smacked the back of Kim Chil's head and... Huh. As he listened to the exploits of Hyung Nim, Yoo Jin Ho's heart beat faster as if he was there, experiencing everything personally. As expected of Hyung Nim, to him, hunting down high-ranked monsters was nothing. Well, he could knock out a rank A hunter with a single slap, after all. Yoo Jin Ho felt so moved and proud at the same time, after realizing that such an incredible person had been standing by his side until now. Meanwhile, Go Myung Hwan continued on with his story. I really thought that we'd die for sure when dozens of ice elves showed up, but then again... Was he paying too close an attention to the story? Time flew by really quickly. The definitely not short story of that day's events was finally coming to its end. The excited Go Myung Hwan's voice became louder. So, what I'm saying is, this whole thing is just too unfair. Mr. Seong Jin Woo saved our aces back there. He's my life savior. Yu Jin Ho unconsciously nodded his head in agreement. He could understand where Go Myung Hwan was coming from. He also had received similar help before, too. But then, I'm not supposed to reveal the existence of Mr. Seong Jin Woo. I find it difficult to accept the decision of the White Tiger Guild. However, Chairman Yu has given me a call out of the blue, and so, here I am. It was at this point that Yu Myung Han stopped Go Myung Hwan in a dignified manner. Go Myung Hwan Hunter Nim. Yes? I believe that should be sufficient. Ah, my apologies, sir. I got carried away. Go Myung Hwan embarrassedly lowered his head. Yu Myung Han's stare then shifted over to his son, Yu Jin Ho. In the process of investigating more about Hunter Seong Jin Woo, a name that I never expected to hear popped up. At the ends of Yu Myung Han's pointing finger, his index finger pointed to a piece of paper with Yu Jin Ho's name written on it. And it was none other than the raid records Yu Jin Ho handed over to his father. His index finger pointed lower and stopped at the three words, Seong Jin Woo, next. The raid leader, Yu Jin Ho. The raid member, Seong Jin Woo. This was irrefutable evidence. I'm busted. The truth about Hyung Nim helping him out during the process of acquiring his guild master license was now out in the open. Yu Jin Ho's expression hardened. Hunter Seong Jin Woo aided you greatly during your attempt to earn the guild master license. Do you acknowledge this fact? Yes, father. Is there anything else you want to add? Yu Jin Ho's vision darkened. Now that the matter of Hyung Nim lending aid was out in the open, it was impossible to convince his father that he was the right person to take on the position of the Yu Jin Guild's new master. He sensed his father's strict eyes bearing down on him. In the past, being subjected to that withering glare, Yu Jin Ho would lose all strength in his legs. However, he couldn't give up like this. For the first time ever, Yu Jin Ho summoned his courage in front of his father. He lowered his head and raised his voice. Can you entrust the Yu Jin Guild to me, father? I will. Eh? At that refreshingly simple answer, Yu Jin Ho hurriedly raised his head. I shall entrust the Yu Jin Guild to you. But why? Didn't you say it yourself? It is too risky to entrust the Guild to an outsider. With you here, is there a reason to take on that risk now? B but I tried to deceive you, father. You thought I'd scold you and kick you out because of that? What was going on here? Yu Jin Ho thought that his father was smiling, for some reason. But Yu Myung Han's lips would always remain in a straight line, no matter what the occasion was. So, how come? If you entered the dungeons without any plans whatsoever, then I'd have done just that, because I don't remember raising an idiot son like that. Yu Jin Ho's face became hot at that moment. If I hadn't met Hyung Nim, then I'd be getting scolded by father right about now. No, wait. He'd be dead long before that. Yu Jin Ho spat out a sigh of relief inwardly. However, I have a condition. Yes, father. This hunter Seong Jin Woo. Can you bring him over to Yu Jin? Yu Jin Ho's eyes opened wider. You mean Hyung Nim? K Hyung Nim? The light within Yu Myung Han's eyes flickered a little just then. But that didn't last for long. That's correct. 
Yu Jin Ho became speechless then. Groan. Even a snot-nosed brat would know that now was the right time to confidently say something in order to leave behind a positive impression. However, the one they were talking about was none other than Hyung Nim. Yu Jin Ho could ask, sure, but he wasn't confident of anything else besides. So, he replied honestly, I can't be certain. Very good. There is no meaning if the challenge is too easy for you. The chairman Yu Myung Han took a sip of water and lightly wiped the corners of his lips with a handkerchief. If you fail, I shall hand over the guild to your brother. So, how about it? Will you accept? Yu Jin Ho's expression became grave. This is the shot I struggled so hard to get. If he backed out now, then he wouldn't be able to show himself in front of Hyung Nim, who helped him right until the end for this opportunity. Yu Jin Ho became deeply earnest as he replied, I accept, father. Good. With that reply, the negotiation between a father and a son had come to a conclusion. Yu Myung Han wordlessly nodded his head, and Yu Jin Ho stood up, bowed his waist, and left the room. Yu Myung Han took the handkerchief away from his lips. It was getting harder to suppress the smile trying to form on his lips. This kid. This boy wanted Yu Jin Guild. He suspected something was up when they agreed to meet today, but he didn't expect his son to be this daring. Indeed, a tiger's cub is still a tiger at the end of the day. The smile finally began to spread on Yu Myung Han's lips. That famous chairman Yu Myung Han is actually smiling. Go Myung Hwan's eyes were growing large as he witnessed everything. The widely known nickname of Chairman Yu Myung Han was Poker Face. He was famed for never showing any emotion whatsoever, whether it be a joyful occasion or a sorrowful one. When Go Myung Hwan continued to stare utterly mystified, Chairman Yu Myung Han turned to him and asked, Hunter Nim, was there anything you wanted to add? Suddenly finding himself on the receiving end of that stare, Go Myung Hwan got flustered and hurriedly shook his head. No. Not at all. 47, 48, 49, 50. With a frightening clearing speed, Jin Wu climbed up the floors. You have killed the mid-ranked demon. You have earned 300 experience points. You have acquired one soul of demons. You have killed the mid-ranked demon. You have killed the mid-ranked demon. He didn't feel tired at all when looking at the total experience points and the accumulated number of souls climbing up higher every time he hunted a monster down. Collected number of souls, 4308-10,000. It's not even at the halfway mark yet, huh? He had been endlessly hunting demons down ever since entering this place, but as expected, the wall of 10,000 souls was indeed high and difficult to overcome. However, what about his level? Level, 69. In the space of one day, it had risen by another two. The leveling up speed had slowed down compared to the beginning, but it could still be considered as blistering when looking at the rate of collecting the required souls. Even now, the experience points were quietly piling up. Kick! Killed the mid-ranked demon. You have earned 300 experience points. You have collected one. Soul of... Whew! After finishing off the last demon still standing before his eyes, Jin Wu stretched his back and scanned his surroundings. Beneath the confidence-inspiring shadow soldiers standing around him, the countless corpses of mid-ranked demons could be seen littering the ground. Clap. Jin Wu smealed deeply and clapped his hands. Nice work. The soldiers who fought hard for him all returned to his shadow in an instant. The magic crystal could be collected by them, sure, but loot had to be manually collected by Jin Wu. Will you take... Well, he had to manually click yes on every system message that popped into his view. That was why. This is a bit cumbersome, isn't it? So that was why, when there weren't that many demons, he took care of them himself, real fast. And when there were, in a big group like this time, he fought together with his soldiers. As soon as the battle was over, he'd start collecting the loot right away. Just... What's so fun about this that Yu Jin Ho insisted on doing it? Jin Wu extracted a piece of loot from the dead demon and smirked to himself. There was one more cumbersome thing about this place. 
it was impossible to extract shadows inside the demon's castle. Didn't matter whether it was a mid-ranked or low-ranked, the black fog-like thing that denoted if he could perform the shadow extraction or not didn't rise up from the demon's corpses. Even when I'm staring at the remains, too. This mana is tainted. It's impossible to perform shadow extraction. Nope. He only got some messages saying that he couldn't extract shadows because mana was supposedly tainted. Is there anything I can do about this? Just as Jin Wu scanned the remains of the demons with a helpless expression on his face, a new message popped into his view. T-Ring. You have discovered 29. Item. Horns of mid-ranked demon. Will you take them all? Jin Wu grinned brightly. Of course. Jin Wu quickly shook away the regret he felt over the shadow extraction problem, with the help from the abundant loot falling on his lap. Nothing I can use directly among the pile, eh? In that case, sell them all. As soon as he sold off all the japtum, more gold got neatly deposited into his bank balance. Current gold, 9 more 14, 690, 772. Hook! Jin Wu checked his inventory without thinking too much, only for his eyes to shot open real wide. The amount of gold sitting pretty in there had shot past 900 million already. Well, each pair of demon's horns are worth about 200,000, and I hunted down well over 4,000, so... Not to forget, he also sold off other unnecessary japtum on his way here as well. So it was understandable that gold would accumulate at a frightening pace. Should I buy a rarity S weapon or armor? Before long, though, Jin Wu shook his head. He wasn't in a need for one, so no real need to force himself to spend money just because he had some. Right. There will come a time when I need to splurge on something. Jin Wu closed the inventory window and lightly dusted his hands. He was done with cleaning up his surroundings. He had procured the important entry permit for the 51st floor a long time ago. So, the only thing remaining was to get to the floor transfer magic circle and go upstairs. But... Jin Wu's sight shifted towards the Pillar of Light. More specifically, a short distance in front of that pillar. And a massive demon, plus scores of high-ranked demons, were standing there, waiting. Jin Wu raised his sight up higher, and he could see the giant demon's name, floating in the air in a deep crimson hue. The Sovereign of the Lower Floors the avaricious Vulcan. That thing consisted of a huge mess of fatty flesh that must have weighed dozens of tons. No, maybe even several hundred instead. And then, the massive club this thing was holding in hand looked rather horrifying as well. However, a smile was etched on Jin Wu's face. So, that's the mid-boss of this place, huh? He held only the nicest memories of the bosses found inside the instant dungeons. They all gave him plenty of experience points as well as wonderful items. Compared to the boss-level monsters found in regular dungeons that required lots of hard work to kill but little reward to show for it, these boss monsters of instant dungeons were more like boxes of gifts, all nicely wrapped up. So then, what items would that guy cough up? Gulp. Jin Wu smiled brightly and began drooling. Chapter 72 Should I get started then? Shadow soldiers were summoned behind Jin Wu. Not just the regular foot soldiers, but also the magic soldiers, the beast soldiers, as well as the two knights too. And in front of them stood Jin Wu. The two knights strode forward and stood on either side of him. Jin Wu took a glance at Egret to his right, an iron to his left, and a grin formed on his lips. Feels so reassuring. Even though this was his own skill, the fact that he had comrades watching his back helped greatly to calm his mind. However, still, it's a bit too much to go with a frontal assault, isn't it? The whole thing looked kinda dangerous. And that was all thanks to that wooden-looking club held tight in Vulcan's grip. It's just unbelievable that a tree that big actually existed, right? He guessed from the size of Vulcan and the wooden club that one swing from the demon would be enough to wipe away his entire platoon. It's fine if they get swept away, but the real problem would be the MP required to regenerate the fallen soldiers. Without a doubt, continuously regenerating his soldiers that got repeatedly obliterated by that thick blunt weapon would bottom out his MP in no time at all. In that case, there was only one way to do this. 
I'll have to take care of the boss. In other words, he'd let his boys deal with Vulcan's underlings, while he himself would fight the boss. This was the best plan he could think of. Well, all I have to do is hunt it without getting hit. Unlike with his soldiers, Jin Wu was confident of dodging Vulcan's attacks. In order for his plan to work, though, he had to separate Vulcan from his underlings first. Jin Wu ordered his magic soldiers to initiate the assault first. Use the ranged attacks to summon Vulcan's lackeys over here first, and I'll fight that big guy lumbering along at the rear. It was a simple enough plan to carry out. Now. When Jin Wu gave his signal, flames flew out from the hands of the magic soldiers. Swash. Swash. Kaboom. The flames exploded near the subordinates of Vulcan, signaling the beginning of the operation. Tiring. The sovereign of the lower floors, the avaricious Vulcan, has discovered the intruder. Vulcan's loyal guard has discovered. Vulcan's loyal guard has discovered. Tiring, tiring, tiring. The warning beeps resounded out in his head at a frightening pace, and at the same time, Vulcan and its lackeys all turned their heeds towards Jin Wu and his army. All right. He succeeded in drawing their attention. In order to hit Vulcan coming up from the lackey's rear without getting discovered, Jin Wu activated stealth and hid himself. Shururu. Everything seemed to be unfolding according to plan. That's what he thought. But then... Thud, 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 thud. Vulcan broke his expectation and bolted forward like a streak of lightning. What the hell? What is up with that movement? It's like I'm looking at video footage sped up several times. Quite literally, in the blink of an eye. Vulcan had ran past its lackeys and arrived before the shadow soldiers. Oh crap! Jin Wu's eyes widened considerably. This demon with a huge, mountain-sized body mass managed to exceed his imaginations. Mmm. Vulcan lifted the club up high just before the club pointing to the sky fell down on the defenseless magic soldiers, Iron jumped it out of nowhere and raised his black shield. Hoosh! Quajik! The attack was defended against somehow, but both arms of Iron were shattered into pieces. The sturdiest, toughest among the shadow soldiers couldn't withstand a single attack and was rendered unable to fight any further. Scatter! The shattered pieces of Iron's arms fell to the ground and scattered away. Mmm. Mmm. Perhaps finding its previous attack not to its liking. Vulcan tilted its head this way and that, while staring deeply at its club. But that was only for a brief period. The Biestard slammed down with the club once more. Ma, Mmm. Quajik. Iron, who had lost all means to defend himself, as well as the magic soldiers behind him, were crushed to oblivion next. Crack. Witnessing that event unfold, something inside Jin Wu loudly snapped into two. This son of a beach dares to... Jin Wu bit his lower lip. What he did next wasn't because his head told him to do it. Pot. When he regained his senses, he was already in mid-air, leaping towards Vulcan. His target was already set. And that would be that surprisingly beady little head, attached atop the mountainous body. Jin Wu twisted his body in mid-air. The muscles of his shoulder and the arm cocked rearward ballooned up. When he focused all his might on his clenched right fist, stealth came undone automatically. M mm. Belatedly, Vulcan discovered Jin Wu. Too bad, Jin Wu's fist was not slow enough for the giant monster to dodge when it was already near its nose. Sweek! His fist punched out like a bullet and slammed into the side of Vulcan's face. Quaboom Vulcan was flung away. The giant demon rolled away on the ground for a long, long time, before crashing into the skeletal remains of a building, and came to a stop. Rumble! Crash! Then, the barely standing remains all tumbled on top of Vulcan, burying the demon underneath. Tap! Jin Wu lightly landed back on the ground, his eyes quite wide open. Why did it fly away that easily? Unable to comprehend what just happened, he stared at his own fist in disbelief. He couldn't even spot a single nick or a scratch on his fist that managed to blow away such a huge creature. Then, he suddenly recalled something. Ah, uh, now that I think about it. Jinwoo raised his head. He summoned the stat window, and it quickly floated up there, 
Stats, Strength, 150. Endurance, 109. Agility, 139. Intelligence, 109. Perception, 111. That's how it was. He may have learned several assassin-related skills, and his class was set as a magic type, so he had been forgetting about a crucial part until now. Strength, 150. He had been using up all the spare bonus stat points on intelligence, yet strength was still ahead by 1.5 times. Well, uh, I really did invest in strength blindly, didn't I? On top of this, his level had increased explosively as well. Just from checking out each of his stats, he could definitely feel the results of all that grinding. One of those results was this. Jinwoo stared at Vulcan, still buried underneath the rubble with a dumbfounded face, before a wry chuckle left his lips. Huh. It was hard to feel it when he was busy massacring the regular monsters, the low-ranked and mid-ranked demons. But after punching the boss-level creature, he was certain of it now. I've definitely become stronger. Clench. He felt strength flowing into his clenched fists. Heightened excitement filled every inch of his body. It was then. The familiar mechanical bleep rang inside his head. Ti ring. What was that? Jin Wu raised his head. Mmm. -hmm. The fallen Vulcan used the club to prop itself and stood up from the rubble. Did the warning chime go off because the monster is getting up? Was his system that friendly to begin with? As Jin Wu tilted his head, the culprit for that beep popped up in front of his eyes. The Sovereign of the Lower Floors, the Avaricious Vulcan, has activated. Skill. Rage. Uh? Tiring, tiring, tiring. The warning chime went in his head one after the other. The rage state will be continuously maintained. All of Vulcan's stats will be increased by 50%. Vulcan will feel less pain. Isn't that skill from... Even before Jinwu managed to recall the memories of Kerberos, Vulcan, with its two reddened eyes, rushed towards him like an unstoppable tidal wave. Thud, 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 thud. The ground rumbled, accompanied with the loud rumbling footsteps. Jinwu sneaked a glance behind him. Vulcan's lackeys were currently engaged in a bitter battle with the shadow soldiers there. Kruar. Kiek. In the midst of this confusing melee, Jin Wu still could locate iron. The impact force must have been too great, because iron was still in the middle of regeneration. Iron! Jin Wu called out. Iron quickly threw his shield to Jin Wu. After catching the shield, Jin Wu shifted his glance away to find Vulcan standing right before him. If I back off here, my soldiers will get wiped away. Without his soldiers, it had become far too difficult to hunt down Vulcan and its subordinates. So, Jin Wu chose the method that could ensure the safety of his soldiers. He raised the shield, and his arm muscles tensed up. <coughs> Shortly thereafter, Vulcan slammed down with its club. Slam! Quang! Boom! Fearsome attacks that rocked the earth landed several times in a row without rest, but Jin Wu patiently endured them all. His high physical defense and endurance stat allowed him to block these attacks. Mm hmm? When its attacks did not work, Vulcan became even more frenzied and pounded away with that massive club. Slam, quang, boom, kaboom! However, Jin Wu was steadfast and his knees buckled not even once. Still. Still, standing around like this blocking all the time wouldn't let him hunt the boss down. Deep frowns formed on Jin Wu's forehead. The thing was, unlike how it was with Cerberus, Vulcan's rage's skill didn't have a time limit, the trade-off being the skill not as overpowered as the gatekeeper's version. Meaning, he couldn't remain passively defending forever like this. Slam! Boom! Jin Wu gritted his teeth. Constantly getting pounded on isn't my thing either. Kwang. Just as the club bounced off of the shield for the last time, Jin Wu had been getting ready to counterattack and took the opening to leap towards Vulcan's head. However, he wasn't the only one waiting for an opening. Hmm! Matching the timing of Jin Wu's jump, Vulcan quickly leaned its upper torso back. What? And then, the club flew in towards him from the side while drawing an arc in the air. Ah! He got me! If there were places where his hands or feet could touch, the story might have been different.
but there was no way he'd be able to dodge the attack in the middle of air. And even if he managed to block it, who knew just where he would end up from the rebound? Swoosh! As the time slowed down in his perception, Jinwu stared at the club approaching ever closer and leaked out a groan. A way. There must be a way. If he could move his body, then surely he'd be able to dodge this no problem. When his thoughts arrived at this point. Moving my body? An idea suddenly popped up in his head. There was no time to think about this. As soon as the idea formed in his head, Jinwu activated the skill Ruler's Reach and pushed at Vulcan. Mmm. Of course, the power behind the skill, Ruler's Reach was far too low to move the massive body of Vulcan. However, the rebound meant that it was Jin Wu who was pushed back instead. Whoosh! The tip of the club missed him by a hair's breadth. I did it! Jin Wu was flung away some distance and rolled on the ground a few times, but compared to what might have happened when hit by that club, his landing this time should be seen as far, far gentler. Whew! Jin Wu managed to find his balance and sighed in relief. Mmm. -mm. On the other hand, Vulcan's expression had crumpled quite unsightly. It attacked, feeling proud and all. But in the end, it was all for nothing. That fact caused its fury to reach the peak. Mmm. -mm. Mmm. -mm. Jin Wu scratched the side of his head while staring at Vulcan's reddened face. Now what should I do about this? If he jumped to its front, the dame thing would evade him with not much difficulty. But then, attacking other body parts instead of its head didn't look like he'd be able to critically wound it, what with all those layers of flesh getting in the way. Is there a way to make it impossible to dodge? It was at this point that yet another, and an arguably excellent idea popped up in his head. The corners of Jin Wu's lips arched up. Suddenly, he turned around and ran. Vulcan mistook this action as him trying to escape and hurriedly chased after him. Rumble, thud, thud, thud. Jin Wu moderated his running speed so Vulcan could chase after him. As soon as he discovered a suitable remnant of a building, his eyes began gleaming brightly. That one. On the other hand, mmm. When the distance between Vulcan and Jin Wu closed up, the giant demon lifted its club high up in the air behind it to squash this bug like creature. Finally, the chance to crush this annoying pest once and for all was here. A disgusting smile formed on Vulcan's face. And so, as the club came down with a whoosh, the insect like creature suddenly sped up and ran up on the outer wall of the destroyed building. Mm hmm? Something felt wrong here, but it was too late for the demon to slow down the descent of the club. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? In an instant, the insect had run up high enough to be at the demon's eyeline before he powerfully kicked the wall. Crack! As the spiderweb-like crack spread on the wall, something shot towards this demon with never-before-seen speed. It was none other than that insect. Mm -mm. Vulcan's eyes grew wider. A smile spread on Jinwu's face as he looked into those large eyes. The Baruka's dagger gripped tightly in his right hand, sliced past the bulging artery of Vulcan's neck. Slice! From the blood vessel, as thick as a grown man, blood spurted out like an overflowing fountain. M -m 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 -m. Vulcan hurriedly discarded the club and tried to stem the loss of blood with both of its hands. M -m -m. Unfortunately, it was insufficient to block the overflowing of blood. At that moment, there was a visible tremor shaking Vulcan's eyes. M -m -m. Before it had the time to notice it, Jin Wu had climbed up the demon's back and buried the blades of his daggers deeply into that thick neck. I guess once isn't enough, huh? Jin Wu tilted his head and pulled the daggers out before activating his skill once more. Vital points targeting! Two daggers stabbed deeply into Vulcan's neck again. Stab! Stab! Only then did the messages he was waiting for pop up. Tidy ring. You have killed the sovereign of the lower floors, the avaricious Vulcan. You have earned 150,000 experience points. The souls of demons trapped inside Vulcan's stomach have been released. You have acquired 72 Soul of Demons. Level up. Level up. Chapter 73 Thud Vulcan fell to the ground hard. 
Jin Wu relaxedly walked out from the thick, ash-gray dust clouds rising up and took a look around him. He was thinking of assisting the shadow soldiers right away, but even they seemed to be getting close to finishing up as well. Kayeshk! Kekek! Kick! As the shadow soldiers hacked away with their swords, the number of Vulcan's underlings rapidly decreased. Status! Jin Wu studied his status window. Since he had leveled up only a moment ago, both his HP and MP were full. I've plenty of mana, so I don't really need to help out, huh? As long as there was sufficient mana, shadow soldiers would be exactly like immortals. Now that was the true power of an undead army. Leaving the mop-up of the remnants to his trusty soldiers, Jin Wu turned around in order to collect the loot. Hmm... Was this feeling similar to unwrapping a gift? Seeing that dead body of Vulcan, a smile automatically formed on his lips. I wonder what'll come out this time. He could spy several lights sparkling on the body. Just like before, Jin Wu extended his hand towards the lights. Then, item acquisition messages popped up in his view. Tidi Ring. You have discovered item Demon Sovereign's earrings. Will you take it? You have discovered item Bead of Avarice. Will you take it? You have discovered item Vulcan's Horns X2. Will you take it? You have discovered material item Fragment of the World Tree. Will you take it? He had been feeling rather optimistic about fighting Vulcan, even before the battle started. And as he expected, items were quite literally pouring out from the dead demon. Having checked the list only once, Jin Wu's face was brightening up considerably already. I can pretty much tell that Vulcan's horns should be Japtum. From its name to the total number he found. It wasn't that hard to guess that Vulcan's horns were Japtum only good for additional gold, just like the demon's horns he got after killing various demons, which meant the remaining three were the real items. And there was this one item that attracted his attention more than the others. You have discovered material item. Fragment of the World Tree. Will you take it? What is this material item thing? What could he possibly make with something like that? Or was the system trying to imply that it might be something related to a quest? Jin Wu's curiosity roused from its slumber after reading about a type of item he hadn't heard of before. If he wanted to read the explanations on the items, he had to acquire them first. So, he chose yes on all the item acquisition messages. Take them all. The lights glittering from different parts of Vulcan all morphed into items and appeared near his feet as soon as he said that. A pair of earrings, a red marble-like object, and timber as big as a grown woman. He could immediately tell which one was the fragment of the world tree among them. Jin Wu looked at the timber. When he did, the information on the item popped up. Material item, fragment of the world tree. Rarity, type, material remaining part of Vulcan's club originally fashioned out of a branch of the world tree, after the contaminated portion had been removed. Timber from the world tree possess extraordinary magical energy, and is seen as top material for the crafting of the very best magic tools available. Top material for the very best magic tool, is it? He was curious about just what could be made from this piece of wood, but too bad, that wasn't disclosed. Still, there was no doubt this thing was no ordinary item. Simply by standing near it, he could sense a powerful aura coming off of it. This timber. I think it'll come in handy later. Instead of selling off this fragment of world tree to the store, he decided to store it in his inventory. After he finished doing that, Jin Wu confirmed the details on the other loot as well. Item. Demon Sovereign's Earrings. Rarity. S-Type. Accessory Endurance. Plung 20. Stamina Plung 20. When worn together with Demon Sovereign's necklace and Demon Sovereign's ring, set bonuses will be unlocked. Set bonus effect 1. Locked. Set bonus effect 2. Locked. This one has hidden set bonuses. If only its additional stat boosts were concerned, then it was not that different from the gatekeeper's necklacy in terms of usefulness. But this Demon Sovereign's earrings had hidden set bonus effects as well. Even if those set bonuses were ignored, the item itself was still quite brilliant. Both his endurance and stamina got a boost of 20 points, which was considerable. Every level up gives me 5 stat points, so... He'd need to level up 8 times to get that many stat points, in other words. Feeling genuinely pleased now, 
Jin Wu picked the earrings up. Will you equip item Demon Sovereign's earrings? Equip. Just like with other items, earrings disappeared from the view, but their options still activated with no problem. A satisfied smile formed on Jin Wu's face after confirming the rise in his stats. So, the accessory set of a Demon Sovereign then. Other accessories should be around here somewhere, right? What with the word demon in their names, he could easily guess that those items must be somewhere inside the demon's castle. Just what kind of set bonuses would be unlocked if he managed to find the other two? He had found only one part of the set, but there was nothing he could do about his anticipation soaring higher. However, Jin Wu's smile didn't last for long. What is this now? Item, Bead of Avarice. Rarity, a type, magic tool. Bead created by solidifying superior demon Vulcan's blood will strengthen all magical effects and cause greater damage. Effect, Appetite for Destruction, X2 Magic Damage. It was a spherical red object the size of a billiard ball. Jin Wu tightly grasped the Bead of Avarice. But there was no change to his stats. He then summoned and checked the class-related skill windows, since those were the only things that could be called magic in his repertoire. But he saw no change to the number of shadows he could extract, nor the number that could be stored. Maybe it's not something I can use. Jin Wu's head tilted this way and that. An increase of 100% in magic damage. That kind of performance was quite incredible indeed. Now, originally, tools that boosted magic cost an arm and a leg, so only a few mage-type hunters could afford to use them. Even then, Jin Wu had never heard of an item that could double the power of magic among all those uber-expensive artifacts. If there were, then it had been utter chaos, with headlines and special reports and whatnot. So, there was no way he'd be unaware of one until now. However, this bead of avarice or whatever could supposedly double the amount of magic damage. But so what? It doesn't really help me anyway. Jin Wu licked his lips. An item that doubled magic damage but did nothing else would not have any effect on him. Both his shadow extraction and shadow storage had nothing to do with damaging something to begin with. And the rest of his skills weren't magic related either. At this point, he'd rather prefer to have an item that raised his intelligence stat instead. Tsk! Jin Wu formed a wistful expression and lightly tossed the bead of avarice up and down in the air. Meanwhile, his soldiers arrived near him one by one after taking down Vulcan's remaining underlings. The first one to arrive was Egret. In the right hand, three, and another three in the left, he carried a total of six demon heads and placed them before Jin Wu. Duh, Jin Wu looked at Egret kneeling before him and scratched the side of his head. Um, hey man, can't you stop doing that? Of course, Egret and his gravely lowered head didn't reply. Because of you. Jin Wu's gaze slowly shifted over to Iron. Nobody could tell just when he did it, but Iron had cut Vulcan's head off and dragged it all the way to Jin Wu before kneeling on the ground. This guy is starting to imitate you, you know. More importantly, Jin Wu hunted Vulcan down not iron. Jin Wu spat out a long groan while keeping his stare fixed to iron. It was at this point that an amusing idea popped up in his head. Just like how I used iron's shield, maybe should I try and let these guys use this bead of avarice? What a good timing it was, since he spotted the magic soldiers slowly walking behind the regular infantrymen. They were far slower compared to normal shadow soldiers, never mind the two knights. Jin Wu summoned the first of the three magic soldiers to arrive in the vicinity. When he beckoned with his hand, the magic soldier decked out in the black robe hurriedly walked towards him. Maybe I should go there myself. Jin Wu lightly shook his head and took large strides towards the magic soldier, before handing over the bead of avarice, and then pointed at the remnant of the building he used to run up during his battle against Vulcan. Since all shadow soldiers could be controlled via his will, he didn't really need to issue any particular commands here. Jin Wu simply gave the signal. Fire! Right at that moment, a ball of flames that was double the size of the usual attack suddenly materialized at the tip of the magic soldier's raised hand. Hyok! Jin Wu's eyes opened super wide. Without giving him enough time to get shocked, the ball of flames quickly flew out from the magic soldier's hand. Swoosh! Kwaboom! Huh? Jin Wu's jaw dropped to the floor. 
The building was swept up in the grand explosion and collapsed like a house of cards, and the ferocity of the burning flames didn't show any signs of weakening at all afterwards. Jin Wu stared in pure shock at the roaring flames before he hurriedly took the bead of avarice back from the magic soldier. He then quickly checked the item information once more. It's not there. It's definitely not there. He went through the explanation several times to make sure, but without a doubt, there was nothing about him being prevented from lending this bead of avarice to someone else. Didn't this mean he could potentially sell this item? Gulp. Jin Wu swallowed his dry saliva before his gaze shifted back to the burning building. Rumble. Crackle. Yet another part of the still-burning building issued a loud rumble and collapsed to the ground. Seeing that, the corners of Jin Wu's lips began quivering uncontrollably. Well now, this is... Mage-type hunters would definitely go mad with greed over this thing. His previous wistful look was long gone by now, replaced by the expression of anticipation slowly filling up his face, in the middle of a sunny afternoon. The young man from the apartment 902, you say? An auntie tilted her head and replied a short while later. Hmm, I'm not sure. I haven't seen him lately. Ah, is that so? Thank you for your help. Hyun Kicheol lowered his head and said thanks. It had been four days since he began waiting for Hunter Seong Jin Woo near the youth's old apartment building. However, he hadn't run into his target until now. At this point, Hyun Kicheol was beginning to feel that making veggie juice every morning was a bit of waste now. He let out a helpless sigh and pulled his phone out. Ring. Ring. Shortly afterwards, the recipient answered the call. I'm here, Kichiol. Section Chief. The recipient was, of course, the Section Chief, Ah Sang Min. Seong Jin Wu Hunter Nim is nowhere to be seen. Residents of the building say they haven't seen him lately either. Really? Yes, sir. It can't be helped then. From tomorrow onwards, come back to the office. Understood. Click. An Sang Min ended the call and tilted his head. Just where did Hunter Song Jin Wu go to? No one could contact him for the past few days now. Wondering if he was avoiding phone calls for the time being, An Sang Min had dispatched Hyun Ki Chiol over to where Song Jin Wu lived. But the news wasn't good. No one had seen the young hunter for a while. An Sang Min couldn't help but wonder if something had strange happened. I can't figure out why I should be worried about him, though. In any case, this kind of felt rather weird to him. Tap, tap. Someone tapped him on the shoulder, and when he turned around to look, he found Hunter Park Hui Jin standing to his side. She opened her mouth first. Apparently, he told his little sister that he'd be going on a trip with his friend for a week or so. You mean, Seong Jin Wu Hunter Nim said that? Yes. In that case, he's probably not on Earth anymore. Pardon? Park Hui Jin's eyes opened wide. An Sang Min quickly explained himself. We haven't found any evidence of him going overseas, and there is no record of him drawing money from his bank or using his credit card either. You can even find out things like that? Well, it's our job to follow around various hunters, after all. Oh my god. Anyways, on top of this, according to the association's last known location records, the communication with his phone was cut off in the middle of the city as well. And that happened about five days ago. Doesn't all this sound too mysterious to you? He couldn't have been kidnapped, right? Park Hui Jin inadvertently voiced her worry in the ensuing confusion. However, the gazes of the two people soon met, and they began chuckling almost at the same time. It was hard to tell who started first. Seriously now. Just who was Seong Jin Wu? He was none other than a hunter who soloed a high-ranking dungeon. Not only that, a red gate to boot. An Songmin scratched his cheek and spoke up. If you want to kidnap Xiong Jin Wu Hunter Nim, well, you'd need at least the rumored Chinese special forces to show up. You know, the ones supposedly made up entirely of high-ranking hunters. Park Hui Jin nodded her head in agreement. I and Song Min continued to grin, but then found something rather odd and asked her, By the way, how did you find out about him going on a trip? Ah, that. It's from Han Song Yi. I talk to her often, you see. She goes to the same school with Mr. Seong Jin Wu's little sister, so I asked her for a favor. Aha. Uh -huh. With An Song Min's reply, 
their conversation came to an abrupt end. And then, they began thinking the exact same thing. Just where did that guy disappear to? Chapter 74 The upper floors are altogether on a different level, aren't they? Jin Wu began recalling the first, and so far the only boss-level monster he had encountered since he set foot inside the demon's castle Vulcan. That guy's title was The Sovereign of the Lower Floors. As soon as he went past the fiftieth floor that demon resided in, the difficulty curve suddenly spiked up. Before this, he'd climb up over ten floors in a day. As much as twenty even. But his clearing speed had decreased so much so that he found it hard to even clear seven or eight floors in a day now. He was currently standing on the seventy-fourth floor. The high-ranked demons now appeared as regular mobs now. And along with the infrequently spotted superior demons, these two types of monsters displayed sizes and abilities that were worlds apart from those found on the lower floors. Stab, a high-ranked demon. The size of a two-story building slowly collapsed on the ground with a dagger stuck to its chest. Slam! You have defeated a high-ranked demon. You have earned 1,700 experience points. You have acquired one soul of demons. Jin Wu pulled the Baruka's dagger out from the dead demon's chest. This one was the last. Yet another battle had come to an end. The victorious shadow soldiers crowded around Jin Wu as well. Jin Wu surveyed their conditions. There was no way that this was true for an undead army, but for some reason, he thought they all kind of looked exhausted. Indeed, that was how strong the monsters had been on the upper floors. Actually, this last battle happened to be on the easier side, simply because no superior demons showed up. Each one of those guys is on the level of a boss. This wasn't some random guess he just cooked up without any evidence either. The bead of avarice he got after killing Vulcan. The explanation attached to this marble-like item said that it was created from condensing and solidifying the superior demon Vulcan's blood. If those words, superior demon, denoted Vulcan's grade, then it was about on the same level as regular monsters found on the upper floors. Because since the 70th floor, superior demons appeared far more often than not. Well, it had been fine if it were only the monsters' levels that had increased, but... No. There was another problem here as well. The surroundings began changing gradually the higher he climbed. From the 51st floor onwards, the ruined cityscapes were burning in flames, and the higher the floor, the fiercer the flames got. When he finally went past the 70th floor, the surroundings had gotten so hot that, simply from standing still, he lost stamina like sweat drops pouring out of his pores. Just from moving for a tiny bit, his tiredness stat shot up. This place was no demon's castle, but more like the burning tower. The feeling he got before entering this dungeon was proven to be correct. Let's get out of here. This was as far as he could go, this time. He urgently needed to find a way to block out the flames first. Looks like I'll have to find an artifact that can defend against fire-type magic. Equipment used by high-ranked hunters was ruinously expensive. And there was no need to even mention the cost of an item imbued with defensive magic as well. He remembered hearing that a really expensive item could go for several tens of billions of won from a news program in the past. He managed to earn a fair amount of coin while clearing dungeons with Yu Jin Ho. But even then, he couldn't help but worry a bit about whether he'd be able to afford an artifact like that or not. That was why he needed insurance. Selling this guy should be more than enough. Jin Wu smiled while looking at the bead of avarice he oh so carefully tucked inside his inventory. Any mage-type hunter would drool non-stop at this item. How much would this bead of avarice go for if he put it up for auction? He guessed that, as long as he could properly demonstrate its effect, high-ranking hunters would form a long queue in order to buy it. Jin Wu unsummoned the inventory window. The goal for entering this instant dungeon to level up lots had been successfully met. That was why he didn't feel too bad about delaying the clearing of the dungeon to another time. However, one thing did make him hesitate a little. Jin Wu's gaze drifted upwards. Collected souls of demons, 9,624, 10,000. Less than 400 souls remaining. If he could collect a little more of these souls of demons, then he'd be able to clear this quest. And today just so happened to be the sixth day. One more day should be enough to clear this quest. 
One of the advantages of the upper floors was that killing a single demon netted him multiple souls. Meaning, collecting 400 should be a cinch. I'll go home after clearing the quest. Making up his mind, Jin Wu turned around. Maybe because he had a clear goal now, his steps felt doubly energetic. Floors 1 to 74 have been opened. What kind of good fortune was this? A smile spread on Jin Wu's face as he stared at the monster guarding the distant floor transfer magic circle. The guide of the departed souls, Midas. Just from looking at that name alone, he could tell that the monster was a boss. Also, that guy was very eye-catching, what with it wearing a jet black robe and a shiny silver necklace. I'm sure that is the Demon Sovereign's necklace. He originally was thinking of completing the quest, but at this rate, he should get to collect another part of the set equipment too. However, that item wasn't the only thing making Jin Wu smile here. Even if it was a monster that would cough up some great loot, it'd be meaningless if he couldn't hunt it. Jin Wu grasped his two daggers tightly, and then he ran forward. Soon enough, the skeletal mage decked out in the black robe discovered Jin Wu's presence. Tai Ring, the guide of the departed souls, Mitus, has discovered the intruder. Fitting for a boss-level monster, it instantly finished chanting its magic spell. As soon as a crimson magic circle formed beneath its feet, an ominous aura rushed all around it. The guide of the departed souls, Matus has activated, skill, a cursed voice. Heeding Matus's call, an army of undead suddenly rose up from the ground, and they numbered several thousand. A normal person would have been left breathless by the sight of this horrifying army. But when he found himself surrounded by so many enemies, Jin Wu didn't even panic for a second. As I thought. Just as he expected. There were endless streams of black smoke rising up all around the boss monster. Seeing that, it wasn't all that difficult to guess what kind of monster this Matus happened to be. The guide of the departed souls, is it? And the monster's title only helped to further confirm his suspicion. Sure enough, Matus summoned a powerful undead army. Too bad, Jin Wu just so happened to possess the best type of class within this field. Rise up! Wah! Accompanied by painful screams, soldiers began rising up from the shadows of the undead. Their numbers were in the several hundreds. Compared to Metus's army, this number seemed completely ill-matched. But it was actually more than enough for him. Because the real deal was somewhere else. That was why. Create a path for me. Soldiers emerged from Jin Wu's shadow. These guys were the real deal. While the hundreds of soldiers created from the skill Shadow Extraction bought them time, Jin Wu's direct subordinates, the ones he paid careful attention to, leveling up ever since his entrance into the demon's castle, carved out a path for him. His destination was obvious. Igret and Iron took the lead and with frightening speed and destroyed the opposing undead creatures. The distance to the boss, Midas had closed up in an instant. This should be enough. Jin Wu quickly shoved past and rushed out into the front. Dash. Skill level of Dash has increased. Thanks to him running around all over the huge demon's castle, the Dash skill had risen up a level. Nice. A grin formed on Jin Wu's face. Jin Wu escaped from the undead army's siege and stood before Mitus in an instant. Their gazes collided midair. You didn't expect this to happen, did you? Jin Wu's gaze was filled with Victor's leisure, and Mitus could only flinch from that. No, he thought that the monster flinched. Do monsters feel fear? Such a thought only lingered for a second, before Jin Wu's daggers left behind dozens of afterimages. Plop. The boss-level monster weakly fell to the ground. He already knew through experience that mage-type monsters relying on controlling others to fight were very weak when the battle became one-on-one. -on -one. The moment he saw Mitus in the distance, he had envisioned this end. Jin Wu returned the daggers to his inventory. Soon, the expected message popped up. Tai Ring. You have defeated the Guide of the Departed Souls, Matus. You have earned 200,000 experience points. You have discovered Souls of Demons sealed within Matus's pendant. You have acquired 220 Souls of Demons. Level up. Level up. Jin Wu clenched his fists tightly. 220 souls in one go. Now that was an unexpected windfall. Collected Souls of Demons. Nine nine seventy one ten thousand dollars. A thick smile floated up on Jin Wu's lips. 
Not much remaining now. He only needed to collect less than 30 now. It was a small enough amount to quickly fill up by hunting down a handful more demons. Jinwu really wanted to quickly finish this quest and so, he hurriedly retrieved all the loot and entered the floor. Transfer Magic Circle. Which floor would you like to transfer to? 76th. The Eastern United States. Huang Dong Su writhed this way and that as if he was having a nightmare before he shot up from the bed. The first thing he saw was the white ceiling. Huang Dong Su tilted his head at these unfamiliar surroundings. Is this a hospital? It wasn't. it wasn't a dream? Huang Dong Su wiped the strand of cold sweat traveling down to his chin. It was at this point that he discovered the patient gown he wore and the IV needle stuck to his arm. Huang Dong Su's expression hardened in fury. And then he spoke in a cold voice. If you have something to say, hurry up and say it and leave. The deputy director of the Hunter Bureau was there with him in the room. A middle-aged Caucasian man with more white than black on his head slowly approached Huang Dong Su's bed. There is something I wanted to ask you personally, so I waited for you to come around. What did he want to ask? Huang Dong Su raised his heed. The deputy director held his gaze without backing down in a skied. That man named Siong Il Huan. Was he really a monster? Do you think I'd attack someone who was a human? I'm not saying that I don't trust you. Only that, I wish to confirm what I saw with my own eyes. The deputy director pushed forward his phone towards Huang Dong Su. A certain video footage was playing on its screen. And this is... Footage captured by CCTV cameras nearby on that day. In the footage, one could see an oriental man rescuing employees from the collapsing Hunter Bureau building. There was no need to ask who that man was. How could Huang Dong Su forget? That face was the last thing he saw before he blacked out. That man was Siong Il Huan. The deputy director's complexion darkened. I have never heard of a monster rescuing humans before. Is there no change to your opinion that this man is a monster? He's definitely a monster. Understood. The deputy director pocketed the phone. Once you're discharged from here, stop by the bureau. There are a couple of documents you need to sign. Huang Dong Su asked the deputy director as the latter was about to turn around and leave. What happened to that man? He disappeared after fighting you. We're in the midst of tracking him down, but he's powerful enough to knock you down easily, so whether he could be caught or not is... Well... Just before he stepped out of the hospital room, the deputy director opened his mouth again, sounding more troubled than before. By any chance, do you have any idea where that man might head off to? Huh. Seeing Huang Dong Su resolutely keep his mouth shut as if he had nothing more to say, the deputy director quietly left the room. But once he was gone, Huang Dong Su furiously yanked the IV needle out of his arm. Fuck! What a humiliating defeat that was. Even before he could figure out what happened, he found his neck trampled on by Siong Il Huan. Not only that, shamefully cowering on the floor, too. Just as he began gasping for air, Siong Il Huan spoke to him. Don't come to Korea. This isn't for my son, but for your sake. You won't be able to close your eyes, even in death. And that's where his memory ended. Once he regained his consciousness, he found himself here. Can't close my eyes even in death? What did he mean by that? Was that a threat to kill Huang Dong Su in such a brutal way that he'd be unable to close his eyes? How dare he threaten me? Huang Dong Su's clenched fists began shuddering in rage. Not only did he lose to a monster, but that man also managed to inflict an unforgettable disgrace on Huang Dong Su as well. I know where he will go to. Huang Dong Su would do anything to catch that man. But how? Didn't matter whether that B Star's identity was a monster or not, there was no denying the fact that he was strong. I need better equipment if I want to kill him. Thankfully, it wouldn't be hard getting his hands on that equipment. I should call my guild. The guild Huang Dong Su was a part of Scavenger, was one of the very best in the world. Hell, 
There was even a joke doing the rounds that, if one were to tally up the value of all the artifacts in possession of the Scavenger Guild, it'd easily exceed the annual budget of a small nation. If I get my hands on some artifacts, there shouldn't be a problem. Madness burned bright within Huang dong sus eyes. To South Korea. That was Huang dong sus next destination. You have defeated a superior demon. You have earned 2,200 experience points. You have acquired one, souls of demons. You have acquired three, souls of slave demons. I did it. Jin Wu couldn't hide his elation. His luck was good. And he acquired four souls from the very last demon he killed. With that, he was able to meet the quest clear goal. Collected souls of demons, 10,001. TT ring. You have completed normal quest. Collect the souls of demons, 1. Your rewards are now available. Will you confirm the rewards? YN, obviously. Once he made his reply, the list of rewards popped up in his view. TI ring. The following rewards are now available. 1. Any one item available in the system. 2. Plus 20 bonus stat points. 3. An unknown reward. Will you accept them all? Other rewards did catch his eye, but right now, the first one on the list demanded the most of his attention. It wouldn't be much of an exaggeration to say that he completed this quest solely for the first reward, too. Accept the first reward. T-Ring. You can choose from any of the items available from the system. Is there an item you want? An item he wanted, was it? Of course there was one. From the moment he saw the details of this quest, Jin Wu was thinking of a certain item. What kind of a result would be facing him now if he chose differently back then? He was curious about this ever since that fateful day. However, he didn't know whether that thing was treated as an item or not. Still, it didn't hurt to try at least. You can choose from any of the items available from the system. Is there an item you want? The system asked him again, as if to urge him on. After a short deliberation, Jin Wu made his reply. The Cursed Random Box Chapter 75 Back when he found himself standing on a crossroad, Jin Wu chose the Blessed Random Box instead of the Cursed Random Box, and the result of that decision was the key to the demon's castle. Thanks to that, he gained entry to this instant dungeon and earned a lot. His level had risen up greatly, he acquired lots of items, and as for gold, well, it was overflowing to such an extent that he was beginning to think he should start spending some very soon. Even if I was given a chance to do over, I'd have chosen the same. However, however, just because he chose to take this path, that didn't mean he was not curious about the potential result of choosing a different path. The blessed random box, supposed to give him what he wanted, and the cursed random box that was supposed to give him what he needed. Just what could be inside the latter. I did get what I wanted from the blessed random box, that's for sure. And so, the perfect chance to satisfy that curiosity once and for all had landed in his lap. His heart began beating a little bit faster than before. Jin Wu quietly waited for the system's answer. He thought that its reply was slower than usual. Tai Ring. His anxiety turned out to be groundless, though, because the system did reply pretty soon afterwards. You have chosen item, cursed random box. The chosen item is now available, Shururu. A small box slowly materialized in front of his feet. Yes! His heart beating much quicker now, Jin Wu hurriedly picked the box up. However, he was suddenly overcome with this feeling that the weight of this box was rather familiar to him. Could it be? He quickly ripped the lid open and confirmed what was inside, only for his eyes to grow very large. Isn't this... Upon exiting the demon's castle, Jin Wu headed home right away. He just wanted to take a shower and clean himself. While he was stuck inside the dungeon, he didn't even get to wash his face once. He could buy all the water he needed from the store, sure, but there was no space or time to wash inside the dungeon. I mean, there are monsters everywhere in that place. So just where would I find the leeway to take a shower? Pshosh. Arriving home, he immediately entrusted himself to the cascading warm water. Only then did the fact that he left the dungeon feel like reality. Yup, being home is the best. Changing to a new set of clothes, 
Jin Wu left the towel on his wet hair and settled down on the edge of his bed. It was now time to get some things organized. First of all, he summoned his stat window. Status. Tai Ring. A long, long wall of text that managed to almost disorient him pop it up in front of his view. Jin Wu's gaze stopped at the status column. Stat points available to distribute. 20. The additional stat points he earned as the quest completion reward were still waiting for him. And of course, he put them all in intelligence. Tai Ring. Stats. Strength. 178. Endurance. 137. Agility. 147. Intelligence. 149. Perception. 19. Finally, intelligence had exceeded other stats. It was still some ways off strength, but when considering the fact that he didn't even pay attention to the intelligence stat until recently, this growth could only be called lightning fast. Strength, endurance, agility, intelligence, and perception. A good balance between them had been established now. Not one of these stats are useless to me. As it so happened, he had gone through stages of seriously investing in each of his stats. And now, he knew full well the effects and advantages each stat brought to the table. Hold on. Now that things had come to this, how about him raising all of his stats equally from now on, instead of focusing only on one? An all-stat player. Suddenly, the desire to become one gripped him tightly. What a happy dilemma to have this was, something only possible, because it felt like not one of his stats was lagging behind others now. Once intelligence rises past strength, I should start slowly raising the others, too. Making up his mind, Jinwu shifted his gaze to the skill window next. That's where he discovered the third reward. Reward 3. Unknown Reward. He thought that the first reward, the item he wanted, and the second reward bonus stat points were more than enough. So he didn't pay all that much attention to the third reward. Maybe he was just mildly curious. Was that about it? But well, he already got the reward, so no need to be shy now, was there? Reward 3 has been made available. Along with that message, a scroll similar in size to the entry permit appeared in his hands. What's this? Jin Wu's eyes opened wider at this unexpected type of reward, and he unfurled the scroll right away. Recipe, Divine Water of Life. You can learn the crafting methods of Divine Water of Life. Jin Wu's eyes widened even further. I can craft an item. With this? And here he was, thinking that only those who had awakened as mage types could craft weapons containing magical energy. Now that he thought about it, though, he was also a mage type, wasn't he? Still, to think, there was a way to craft something with just a recipe like this. Jin Wu heart began palpitating. But a question formed in his head at the same time. Just what could he make here anyway? What is this divine water of life? Jin Wu read the information on this divine water of life written inside the recipe. Item, divine water of life. Rarity, S, type, consumable. A mysterious liquid medicine that cures any and all illnesses through the powerful magic contained within. The effect will only manifest after one whole bottle has been consumed. Cures. Any and all illnesses? The moment he read that information, he thought about his mother, still confined to the hospital. He had already confirmed through Yu Jin Ho multiple times that effects of various potions still worked on other people. If he could truly make this divine water of life, then it meant that he'd be able to save his mother. His hands holding the scroll trembled from excitement. The ingredients were also on the simpler side, so to speak. Fragment of the World Tree. He earned that after killing Vulcan on the 50th floor. Spring water from the Forest of Echoes. He got that after killing Metis the Necromancer on the 75th floor. And finally, purified blood of the Demon King. This item hadn't shown up yet. However, Thinking back to the two ingredients that had come out so far, he could easily guess where he might find some of this purified blood of the Demon Kings from the upper floors. I'm sure it's with the final boss of the Demon's Castle, probably on the top floor. In other words, simply by clearing the Demon's Castle dungeon, the ingredients to craft the Divine Water of Life would fall into his lap one by one. It happened then. Ah. A gasp of epiphany leaked out of his mouth 
completely unbeknownst to him. That's how surprised Jin Wu was. Could it be that? The item he wanted as per description on the blessed random box said, Could that be this divine water of life? Mom. Thinking about the possibility that he'd get to see his mother again all healthy, his eyes began welling up with emotions. Then, a new message popped up. Titai Ring. You can learn crafting skill via recipe, divine water of life. Will you learn this crafting skill? The mechanical beat brought him back to his senses, fast. In order to craft this divine water of life, he needed to clear the demon's castle first, meaning he had quickly get himself prepared and return to that place. He had no time to waste on sentimentality like this. I'm learning it. You have acquired crafting skill for item divine water of life. I'm not dreaming, right? As if to imply that his memories were functioning fine, a new column called crafting skill appeared on the skills window. Crafting skill. Consumable. Divine water of life. 2-3. The numbers behind the name probably indicated the two ingredients he already possessed. The fragment of the world tree and the spring water from the forest of echoes. Ah, right. Next up, Jinwoo summoned his inventory and retrieved an item stored right next to the spring water. It was a necklace, seemingly carved out from skulls of various small creatures. Item, Demon Sovereign's Necklace. Rarity, S-Type. Accessory Agility, plus 20. Intelligence, plus 20. When worn together with Demon Sovereign's Earrings and Demon Sovereign's Ring, set bonus effects will be unlocked. Set Effect 1, locked. Set Effect 2, locked. The spring water from the Forest of Echoes wasn't the only loot he got from killing the Guide of the Departed Souls, Medus. Indeed, this rather vile-looking necklace also came out, too. Why are the designs of all the necklaces I found so crappy? Jin Wu frowned deeply while recalling the appearance of the dog collar he was currently wearing. He slowly brought the Demon Sovereign's necklace closer to his neck. T Tai Ring. Will you replace Gatekeeper's necklace with Demon Sovereign's necklace? Both necklaces boasted rather similar additional effects. Both raised two of his stats by 20 points each. However, the Demon Sovereigns also had the set effect to consider as well. Replace. Shururuk. You have equipped, item, Demon Sovereign's necklace. The skull necklace disappeared from his hands, only to be replaced by a dog collar. He quickly shoved that dog collar inside his inventory and checked the newly unlocked set effect of the Demon Sovereign's accessory set. Item. Demon Sovereign's necklace. Set effect. 1. All stats ploy 5, set effect 2, locked. All of my stats rose up by 5 points. He only managed to unlock one set effect, yet he received a boost similar to leveling up 5 times. And then, he still had one more unknown effect to go, the one he'd receive after gathering all the accessories. The Demon Sovereign's Ring When considering the possibility that the last unlocked set effect from all three accessories being in one place should be even greater than the individual parts on their own. This really was already an amazing performance. However, acquiring accessories rated at S was only a part of the harvest he enjoyed after entering the demon's castle. The real profit was his level jumping up so high. Jin Wu stared at his level that had climbed up to 77 and smiled in content. I leveled up 16 times inside a week. Such a leveling up speed was unthinkable when entering rank C dungeons. He had definitely extracted suitable compensation for going through hell for seven days. He still had some unfinished matters there. But well, this week's conquest of the demon's castle should be called a roaring success, regardless of what. Just that, except for one, there was one thing he couldn't really figure out yet. Jin Wu let the light from the lamp fall on the object that came out of the cursed random box. Just what the hell is this thing? It was a pitch-black key that seemed to absorb all light. No information popped up in his view either. This is the first time seeing an item with absolutely no information. The keys to instant dungeons could be seen as pretty common, since he got them from random boxes every now and then. But this guy here, he had never seen anything quite like it. Where am I supposed to use this? Perhaps because it came out of a box named Cursed, Random This and That. He couldn't help but think that there was this ominous aura circling around the key. He acquired this key through so much hard work, 
so he couldn't even throw it away. Well, I'm sure I'll get to use it sooner or later. The cursed random box was supposed to give him something that he needed, after all. Jin Wu stored the mystery key back inside his inventory and got up from the bed. He needed to purchase a few artifacts if he wanted to completely conquer the demon's castle. And I've got something to sell too. However, there was a problem. And that was, things would become quite complicated if a rank E hunter wanted to buy and sell high-ranked artifacts. Who wouldn't suspect something was off when a low-ranked hunter, no, someone right at the bottom, tried to sell an item that even the top hunters found hard to acquire? It was the same story if he wanted to buy something. As long as the title of rank E followed him around, there would always be questions regarding the sources of his income. And it'll be hard to answer when someone asks me about what I'm planning to do with expensive artifacts, too. Several troublesome situations would unfold at this rate, which means I should... Time to stop pretending to be a rank E, then. Time to get the rank reassignment test. It was now time to get the rank that matched his current set of abilities. Jin Wu's expression became serious. With my current level, surely I won't get jerked around by someone else. That was his original aim, to begin with. In order to avoid situations where he was being under the thumb of someone stronger, he continued to act as a rank E, while taking on all the inconvenience that came along with it. However, what about now? He didn't even falter slightly when Baek Yunhu, the guild master of the White Tiger, stood in front of him. Hell, he was pretty confident of not coring no matter who stood in front of him now, be that Baek Yunho or anyone else. He saw no reason to hide his powers anymore. Thump, thump, thump. When he made up his mind to finally get rid of that irksome rank E tag for good, his heart began beating faster and faster, by eight. But before that there was something he had to confirm first. Jin Wu switched on his hunter-only smartphone. It was his first time powering the device on in a week, so naturally, there were quite a lot of missed calls and messages waiting for him. The majority of those numbers he failed to recognize. It was an unfortunate thing for those callers, but well, he didn't have the time to manually check each and every one out. If they are in a hurry, I'm sure they'll contact me again. Thinking coolly like that, Jin Wu scrolled down the list of contacts and eventually located the number he wanted. He dialed this number. La la la. The bright, energetic pop song didn't even get to play for a second longer, before the other side hurriedly answered the call. Hyung Nim? Maybe Jin Wu stayed inside the dungeon for far too long, because he was surprised by how nice it felt to hear the kid's voice again. A smile spread on Jin Wu's lips as he spoke. Did the talk with your father go well? Yes, Hyung Nim, it went very well. Oh ho? Now that was a good piece of news to hear. Jin Wu made this call to confirm, because he couldn't go ahead and do the rank reassignment test if Yu Jin Ho hadn't made a deal with his father yet. However, if the matters of that side were taken care of, then there really was nothing holding him back at this point. He guessed the good news just from hearing the kid's excited tone of voice, but now that he got the confirmation from the horse's mouth, Jin Wu was feeling really happy as well. Hyung Nim, actually I wanted to come and speak to White. Click. What was that? The phone call abruptly came to an end, and when he checked, the battery in his phone was flat. Oh, right. Even before entering the demon's castle, it didn't have much charge left, didn't it? Well, at least he got to confirm what he wanted to confirm, so that was a relief. Jin Wu fixed his clothes and prepared to leave. The main building of the Hunters Association wasn't too far from here. He should be able to go through the reassignment test pretty quickly. Oh, hang on a second. Jin Wu was just about to leave the apartment, but he hurriedly came back inside. He had forgotten all about his little sister. Since she might get worried if her appa left home again without saying anything, he scribbled a simple memo and placed it on the dining table. Well. He only came back home after a whole week of absence, after all. I came home, but need to go out again. Sorry. With a satisfied smile on his face, Jin Wu turned around to leave. It really had been a while since Jin Wu last came to the Awakened Rank Evaluation Application Kiosk. Has it been four years already? Or 
Maybe it was close to five now? Jin Wu's expression was full of reminiscence as he stood in front of the employee manning the reception kiosk. The employee didn't even bother to look at him and spoke. Please jot down your identification and contact details and give them to me. Jinwu still remembered most of the process, so he had prepared them before coming here. He readily presented both his identification and the contact details. Hmm? The employee's head tilted this way and that after taking one look at Jinwu's choice of identification. Isn't this a hunter license? It is. Employee formed a confused expression. If you are unhappy with your assigned rank, you should head over to another Depar. No, it's not that. I wish to take the reassignment test. Eh? The employee continued to alternate his gaze between the hunter license and Jin Wu's face, before raising a trembling finger in the air. P please, wait for me here. The employee then quickly ran over to a middle-aged man with a scowl on his face sitting somewhere behind him. Manager? A hunter Nim wishes to take a reassignment test. A reassignment test? What's that person's rank? It's an E. The manager craned his neck out and took a look at the waiting Jin Wu's face over by the reception desk. He then reverted back to his previous posture. There are guys like that every now and then. Hunters who are not satisfied by the reality of their situation and swim inside daydreams before coming back here hoping against hope. So, is that guy also? The manager nodded his head. Reawakened, my foot. Others are busy raking in the dough as hunters, getting famous and all that. But well, he drew the short straw and he ended up as a nobody. So, he's just trying to escape from reality. Uh-huh. Dealing with guys like that will only tire you out. So, just tell him that he'll be paying the fee for the test and send him on his way to the measurement room. Roger that. The employee no longer looked like he was suffering from abdominal pain and returned to his seat. Meanwhile, the manager alternated his gaze between the employee and Jin Wu, clicked his tongue before shifting his attention back to the computer monitor in front of him. However, the fingers of the manager stopped typing on the keyboard, the name written on the hunter license. Why did it feel like he had heard of that name before from somewhere? Where was it? Once the young hunter left for the building with the measurement room in it, the manager sneaked in closer to the employee and asked him, That rank E hunter just now, what was his name again? It's Xiong Jin Wu. Do you know who he is? No, it's not that. But, but, he just couldn't get over this feeling that he had heard of that name before, for sure. The manager did his absolute best to jog his memories, and then, his eyes widened as something did enter his mind. Ah! That man asked for a favor, didn't he? That man asked the manager to give him a call if a hunter named Xiong Jin Wu ever showed up here. Why couldn't he remember that sooner? The manager sought out a deserted corner and hurriedly pulled out his phone. Ring. Ring. Hello. It's Bayek Yun Ho speaking. Ah, hello there, Chairman Bayek. I'm calling you because of the hunter you spoke about the last time, the man named Seong Jin Wu. He really came here today, but how did you know that he might appear here? Did you just say that Mr. Seong Jin Wu came there? Yes. He was here just now, applying to get a reassignment test. The conversation came to an abrupt halt and an awkward silence pervaded the line. However, only a short while later, an urgent voice came out from the phone's speaker. Even if it's only for a short while, can you somehow delay the measurement process? I'm on my way over there right now. The manager began tilting his head. Did he just mishear that? The master of the one and only White Tiger Guild was speaking with an anxious voice. Well, I'll be. Besides all that, though, the evaluation process was out of his hands already. The manager could only sheepishly reply while scratching the side of his head. That man must have entered the measurement building by now.